everybody. How are you? I got a great show for you. I just, uh, cause we don't write for Crowder on Fridays, so I get some extra time to really organize the show. And uh, I think uh, today's is pretty good. I know I'm an hour early, but I can do that because of not writing for Crowder. I usually finish with him at about 1040. That's why 11 is so good for me. But I know for some of my Australian friends and people on the other side of the world, I know that this might be a better time. And since uh, you got Big Bear on demand anytime, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's fun to do the live chat because you guys have a, have a good time and I have a good time talking to you. And yesterday's uh, wrenching was pretty hilarious. And Brazil, Brazilian Bear made one of the funniest videos I could have possibly imagined being made from the wrenching that I will be showing you in a bit. But first, from our sponsors. Now, the only sponsor is us. So if you want to keep the show going, get one of my specials at hugepianist.com. Or, of course, you can super chat or paypal.me slash feed the bear. A uh, little honey goes a long way. You can become a Patreon supporter, patreon.com slash WDTL or hugepianist.com slash subscribe. Both of those, you'll get early access to tickets and to anything I'm selling. Because sometimes I don't understand the demand for things and I'll get a bunch of mugs or something and they go in like 20 minutes. Uh, same with shows. Sometimes the show will sell out in an hour. Sometimes it, it'll be a month. So it's just good to be on that... Uh, inside track and uh obviously never an amount that hurts you in any way don't ever put me ahead of your own life that would be a really bad call and i you know growing up i always thought that was obvious but i think that public school system has really failed kids because they uh they aren't taught basic economics all right so today we're going to talk about netflix sam harris versus tolkien and lewis i I really want, I really just want to, uh, Sam, Sam Harris has been just, he's, uh, I'm so torn because I don't want to uh, criticize people in a group that I support and I think are good for society and are pushing back against uh, political correctness and authoritarianism, but that's the irony. The irony is the whole point is to push back. And we would all be hypocrites if we didn't push back at each other. And I've been told by high level members of the intellectual new thing not to criticize Sam Harris. Straight up. People have told me like, hey man, like you can't criticize Sam. And I'm like, and I'll, I'll do my best to see the goodness in Sam. Like I'll, 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 I'll praise him when it's due. When he stood up to people on Islam and whatnot, but the guy needs pushback. He's kind of, he's kind of, uh, the, the, the concession I made in my, to myself was I won't just mock Sam Harris or I won't attack him personally, but I will attack his ideas. And I know that since I've been told I shouldn't, I know I have to, because there's something going on with that guy. All right. So, um, uh, first off, Netflix bans employees from looking at each other for more than five seconds. I just think they should just fire Bill Nye. By the way, Bill Nye, notorious perv, alleged, alleged, alleged. I notice people ready to sue me at all times. But it's, uh, it's a pretty well-known fact that he's always just staring and grabbing and commenting. Alleged, alleged. And you know, the company that had... Kevin Spacey for six years and didn't realize he was a, a filthy little pervert. See, this is the thing. You can't... It, okay, this is why they do this, and I'll tell you why. Because if your philosophy is that all people are the same, like you're one of these Russonian... Uh, I was about to say dipshit, but I'm trying to not be as character attacky. If you're one of these guys that think that we're all just blank slates and you know, the noble savage and that we are just shaped by the uh, societal pressures and, and uh, all this stuff. And there's no difference between men and women and all that. Then all perverts and rapists and creeps and, and, and people that aren't doing very well and all that, it's not their fault. It's all determined previously. It's all just an equation. There is no God. We're all just carbon. And so 
everyone has to follow rules that are designed for perverts that you should just fire. If, if you can't look at people for more than five seconds, how do you have a conversation? This only helps rapists and people with Asperger syndrome who don't want to look at people anyway. That's crazy. And someone from Netflix co contacted me. Uh, it was public, so that's why I'm a little skeptical. If it was a private email, I would take it more seriously. But because public, it's always virtue signaling. But well, not always. I said they said, well, this is bad reporting. We had a meeting about all kinds of stuff and about respect. And that's double speak, you know. And respect. That's like tolerance. Submit to tolerance, you know. So I said, hey, send me whatever materials you guys were given at the at the meeting and I'll totally change what I'm saying. I'll report what you're saying too, not just what what they're saying. And I haven't heard back yet, but uh, I don't know. I mean, this is how crazy these people are. This made me laugh. Someone sent me this. Valerie Vinigan uh, said, you've never known how it feels to get a drop of decent representation in a desert. Greater diversity isn't done for the people. Who, oh, just nonsense. Anyway, uh, Eric July, I don't know who he is, but he's verified and he's black and he sounds funny. The only thing I know about him is this one line, so I'm not saying anything about the guy, but this is hilarious. He writes, ha ha, nigga, I am black. And she responds, and I'm a queer woman with disabilities who finds the N-word among others repulsive. They're talking about the N-word, by the way. And so this woman is saying that she has a right to be more offended by it because she's a queer woman with disabilities and he's black. Listen, as much as I endorse anyone's ability of saying any word, and I don't think the use of words should be divided by race at all, only intention, that's crazy. Black people have more of a right to be offended by the N-word than white people. The fact that white people seem to be infinitely more offended by black than black people is just so telling of the um, victim mentality and the arrogance and just the exploitation of the good nature of people to not want to be racist. Because, of course, people aren't attacking the uh, countries or religions or civilizations that are fundamentally racist and bigoted and exploitative. It's, all, it's, the, it's the country with the least. America. Least. With the most uh, racial diversity on the planet next to maybe Brazil, but obviously Brazil is crazy racist. Not like racist, but you know what I'm saying. It's not like America. Uh, we're doing a pretty darn good job without just failing. You know, I was talking about, I was criticizing atheism yesterday in this video rebutting Sam Harris. And uh, people wrote to me that there's a lot of atheist countries that um, would are great to, to live in. And there's a high standard of living and all that. I'm like, yeah, in 100 years, they're all Muslim, by the way. Atheism isn't anything. It's a vacuum. And nature abhors a vacuum. So when you're looking at Sweden and Denmark and all the and England and all these places that think they could outthink God, well, nature abhors a vacuum. So you're about to get another God. And this God won't let you uh, show your face in public. So uh, good times. Let's talk Sam Harris. Okay. And again, I'm not doing this as a personal attack on the guy. In fact, I'm trying to just do the idea. But I know there's something going on with this. Is this it? Yeah, all right. So let's let's watch this and and I'll I'll rebut some of the things with just quotes from what he's saying because this is some dangerous stuff. It is. It's dangerous if ideas aren't there's no pushback to an idea, all right? Everyone knows that. All right, here we go. So we have really, really good guy, Dave Rubin. Which part is this? Certainties of religious people. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, there's no there's no good reason to believe in Poseidon. Oh, uh, dude. Well, there, those people have existed, but ever naming it, we got it in the water. Points of confusion, yeah, I think we could get behind, get past in five minutes, but it's also possible that... He that the secular community has not been answering in any kind of reliable way. Yeah, sorry. What I'm hearing from Nile uh, is not a philosophy. It's, atheism is nothing. Mm -hmm. Atheism is just a denial of the, the false certainties of religious people. Mm -hmm. It's like, 
no, there's no, there's no good reason to believe in Poseidon, and there's no good reason to believe in Yahweh. That's atheism, yeah. right? So atheism doesn't give you anything that makes you live a meaningful life. And that's not, but the thing is, uh, contra Peterson, that's not a knock on atheism. That's all in the atheism. Atheism is just not being convinced by the, the, bad, relig the bad evidence and arguments put forward by religious people. Mm -hmm. It leaves just a space for better conversations that you may or may not have. You may or... Okay, just real quick. So he says, uh, space for better conversations. So this is... Uh, so this is one of his quotes. One of his... These are all true quotes, too. This isn't like... I'm a gay guy, Abraham Lincoln. This is real. All right. The problem with religion, because it's being sheltered from criticism, is that it allows people to believe in ma en masse what only idiots or lunatics could believe in isolation. Okay, so is that so is that really what atheism is? It's to open up some space for conversation? He just basically called billions of people that don't agree with him idiots or lunatics. An idiot is someone with an IQ of 0 to 25, and a lunatic is someone who's so mentally deranged they have to be put in a padded room. So that is very hostile. So now I'm questioning whether or not he really believes that atheism is just the absence of religion. I thought that's agnosticism, which is what I was for 15 years, which is I have no idea. I was considered atheist. I always thought atheism was the belief in that there is no God. And that's what he's said before. I'm not going to quote it. I'll just go with what he's saying now. Okay. A little more from the big S S H. Not discover. You may or may not fall in love with science and, and a rational approach to, to the contemplative life. I mean, so as a, in a weird way, as someone that wants to connect atheism to spirituality, the failure of, whatever the atheist movement before you was, in a weird way, is, is kind of good because you, you want to lead atheism to a future, right? Like, the, the, the well, I'm, I'm completely unconcerned by atheism. I'm, I'm concerned about the future, right? right? right. But it's, it's like, you know, but the again, the, the place where Peterson and I will, uh, will have disagreed and okay, will disagree so, is, I, mean, I, I think he, yeah. I don't think he understands atheism or I've never heard him say anything that, that, is an accurate portrayal. To help you guys understand atheism and how he specifically views atheism, uh, here's another quote from old Sam. If I could get wave a magic wand and get rid of either rape or religion, I would not hesitate to get rid of religion. Hmm. Doesn't sound very uh, rational, humane. He also said, some positions are so dangerous that it may even be ethical to kill people for believing them, or some propositions. This may seem as an extraordinary claim, but it merely uh, enunciates an ordinary fact about the world in which we live. Whoa, buddy. Whoa, guy. All right, let's uh, listen to a little bit more, and then we'll get into some more fun stuff. But this, it's about to take a real turn. Um, here we go. And I love how just uh, happy-go-lucky Ruben is. Ruben seems like that, that abused wife who's always like, no, everyone gets along. Everyone loves my husband. Ha ha ha. You know, like he's just always so pathologically optimistic. All right. Of what it's like to be, you know, this sort of atheist, or, or you know, and certainly many atheists I know, um, sort of reframing your experience. Yes, you. But, you, but the truth is, you can do that with stories that you know to be bullshit. Like you, you can do that with Batman. Well, I'm telling you, I mean, yeah. I know Star Wars right. isn't a true story. No, but it has. No, a but I mean, but, but you could decide, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up each morning, and think of myself as Luke Skywalker. <laughs> like, you know, you're not Luke Skywalker. No. You know, Luke Skywalker was invented by someone who, in your lifetime, right? So there's no so deep. Okay, it it just it just gets so insulting that it, it's when people say, "Oh, don't don't personally attack Sam Harris." I'm like, dude, he's saying. Things so deeply offensive to people that the non-believers, it, it, you, you just can't even imagine it. All right, but it's fine. So let's look at some dangerous ideas because he says dangerous ideas. So who are three guys who were atheists to the point where they made an atheist state? Okay, here we have Pol Pot, Hitler, and Stalin. 
People will say that Hitler uh, supported the Catholic Church and wrote about the church in Mein Kampf. That is true, but that was, uh, I suspect it was a way in with that uh, power structure. And because by 1935, six, he made it so you couldn't, the Hitler youth weren't allowed to go to church and um, he was starting to kill the Catholics, just like the Jews and other religion. Any, anything to question the state religion and that he was God was killed, were killed. So I'm pretty sure he wasn't um, religious. And of course, uh, Lenin said, what did, uh, what was Lenin's quote? I don't know if I put it up here. It's a good one. Atheism is the natural and in inseparable part of communism. Vladimir Lenin. Karl Marx said, religion is the opiate of the masses. Okay, bear in mind this idea, this communism slash atheism regime has led to the death of potentially 250 million people in the 20th century and as low as 100 million is the lowest possible, highest 250 million. So as Sam Harris says, some ideas are so dangerous that people that believe them have to be killed. And some people would say, well, look at how many um, killings have been done by religion. And then they always say the Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition. For two centuries, the Spanish Inquisition killed 2,000 total people. That's less than communism, atheism killed every day in the 20th century. The number is as high as 200,000, but that seems completely crazy to me. And that's including a bunch more countries. Uh, I don't buy that, but even if so, 200,000, I'm pretty sure that's, uh, that's just the guys with a certain type of eyeglasses from Pol Pot. Uh, and that was state. That was still statism. That wasn't actually religious people. I'm not going to fall on that fallacy because I, I, I say that about communists. You know, communists say there's never actually communism. I'm not going to say no, at not actual religion. But when religion fuses with the state, which is why it's so important to have a separation between church and state, uh, you just, the state, these guys, these fun atheists over here, Stalin, Mao, and Hitler would start using using um, religion as a way to to get power and wield power and then, of course, execute the religious uh, well, science, right? Well, Carl Sagan is a huge influence on me as well as I know Dave Rubin. Dave Rubin's a huge fan of Carl Sagan and uh, very science-minded, creative individual. And he was quoted as saying, an atheist has to know a lot more than I know. An atheist is someone who knows there is no God. By some definition, atheism is very stupid. It's from Carl Sagan. And of course, there's many, 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 many scientists who uh, are religious. In fact, the Catholic Church was instrumental in creating science itself. But I mean, atheists are such good guys, even just in the comedy world. Like, hey, no one is, not only is there is no God, but try not getting a plumber, try getting a plumber on the weekends. Woody Allen, alleged rapist. Um, yeah. So here's a rebuttal. I'm not just going to pull uh, a Sam Harris move, which is just to say what is what he doesn't like. The creation of the vacuum is uh, is not helpful. And that's why people are leaving Harris in droves, droves, because he's intelligent and he has balls and he can be funny in a very dry way. And I've listened to a bunch of his podcasts and I don't hate him at all. I wish him the best, <laughs> but he has to see what people, how people view all of this. Determinism, if you believe in determinism, you, there's no language in determinism. You can't say, I am, I will, I will not, I am. The contradictions are just so wild that someone who isn't, I believe in God, I'm a Christian, I consider myself religious in a sense, I don't really go to church, I don't, I can't quote biblical passages very well. Uh, I'm not like one of these people that's just so, I'm not like so deep into religion that I can't comprehend his argument. It's not one of those things. I'm, if you don't convince me of your argument and you're like trying to be rational, it's pretty bad. Because I was agnostic and went back to Christianity because agnosticism and atheism are, are they, they're even rationally flawed. Every time there's been a state government that's implemented atheism, everybody dies. 
Um, so I'm not just going to cr criticize it and leave a vacuum. Nature abhors a vacuum. So uh, Sam Harris was just mocking Christianity again. Oh, and I know hero, to respond to a bunch of people in my comments from this, people say, well, the hero myth or the hero journey came before Christ as well. And uh, yeah, totally. I, I w I'm familiar with Christianity. And I'm biased because I think it's true. Um, but yeah, like Gilgamesh and stuff like that. Like I'm like, I, I, that, that's all good. That's not what I'm arguing. That's not a contention. My contention is that the story, the belief in the story, because the story can pass information on and morality on to human beings a lot more than a pie chart or a graph or Bill Nye's bow tie is what I'm talking about. The way that, that atheists will mock and condescend, well, I mean, Spider-Man. I mean, I could wake up and think I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I could wake up and think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a verbally boring, just drone pile of mold. And that's how, I would, I, no, I'm not attacking the guy. I promised myself I wouldn't do that. All right, so anyway. But you just have to understand how it appears to someone who uh, is even mildly religious when he compares Jesus to Spider-Man condescendingly, not in like a profound way, not in a respectful way. Someone says the story of Jesus lines up with Harry Potter and Luke Skywalker and, and Spider-Man. Then, then people go, yeah, of course. Yes, that's the story. That's the hero story. That's what establishes morality. That's good. That's good versus evil. That's the individual versus oppression. That's self-sacrifice that's a uh, belief in something bigger than ourselves yes 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 when someone says oh it's like <laughs> spider-man you're like oh you're being a dick and just a little fyi there was a few atheists that were very uh respectful and wrote some really cool stuff on my rebuttal to sam harris and much respect to you guys i disagree with you but i'd still be your friend because i can tell you are also on your quest for truth and to do what's right and to be a good human being. And I'm not like, I, I'll love you if you're a good person. It's not about like, oh, you have to be on my team or this like thing. Or, the only thing I need out of you is that you truly believe what you think. And it's not, and, and your response, because so most atheists just responded with, you're quite literally an idiot. It's pathetic. I would respond to a few of them, but like, just know the entire outside world knows that you don't even believe what you claim to believe. You just are so terrified of looking silly or that you were tricked by like L. Ron Hubbard Jesus. You think you're going to be tricked and that's why you are just like, no, and everyone who thinks is an idiot. But when I say something like that and you don't really have anything to say back and you call me an idiot when I'm quite literally not an idiot, a lit a literally an idiot is someone with an IQ of zero to 25. Mine's 147. So not only am I not an idiot, I'm not even close to being an idiot. And you didn't need to say quite literally, that's you trying to establish that you're on some kind of intellectual rank above me because you saw it in like some mystery science theater show that people say quite literally. It, you sound ridiculous. And so when you have to attack a person and not an idea, you're weak. I have a habit of attacking people because I'm a comedian. But if I want to have people take my idea seriously, I shouldn't attack people in this. This is the interesting thing about my career right now in my life. I'm a comedian, but I'm not going to use that as a crutch for something like this. And that's why I'm, I'm not attacking Sam Harris personally, or at least I'm trying not to. It's just some habits are hard to break. Because I don't want to just say, I'm a comedian, if you have a, a, a point that I can't rebut. Because this isn't me trying to be funny. It's not like hyperbole or sarcasm or irony. What I'm saying is what I believe in this right now. So I'm trying really hard to not just attack the person because in my business, that's funny to attack Sam Harris or to make fun of his, his ears or anything like that. Um, or that he looks kind of like, you know... Ben Stiller with AIDS, if a monkey fucked his mo See, I'm not going to do that because that's the co comedian in me. So you don't do that either. You don't just look at me and say, oh, so it's the guy with the webcam and the fucking, I can't even mock myself. It's just like, where, where are you going to go? My height, my, 
my great penis, my pure, my pure Aryan bloodline. No, I'm just kidding. I'm a quarter J. I'm a quarter trickster. So I get it. All right. So here is a, 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 another way to think. This is a conversation. This is an actual conversation between um, C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. I mean, listen, he's no Sam, they're no Sam Harris as writers, but they're influential writers, you know, and they, they, they helped shape my childhood and, you know, hundreds of millions of others. And they're Christian, but I mean, what, they're either lunatics or idiots, right? So this is a reena reenacted uh, conversation between Tolkien and Lewis. Sent to me by one of my boys uh, who works at InfoWars. It's hilarious. It's hilarious how like well thought out a lot of InfoWars people are. But myths are fiction. The stories they tell aren't true. That's C.S. Lewis. They're lies and therefore worthless, even though breathed through silver. They're just beautiful lies. You, you can't seriously believe in fairy tales. Why not? I can. In fact, I do. <laughs> but this is preposterous. How can you seriously believe a lie? Oh, Jack, myths are not lies. In fact, they are the very opposite of a lie. Myths convey the essential truth, the primal reality of life itself. Go on. Well, you see, we have been duped into using the word myth as being synonymous with a lie because we have been duped into accepting the first real lie of materialism. And what is that? That is the hideous claim that there is no supernatural order to the universe. The materialists have imprisoned us in a world of mere matter, of, of physical facts divorced from and devoid of metaphysical truth. Well, I say that they are lying. I say that they are the ones who have come up with a false myth. Their world doesn't exist. It's merely a figment of their imagination. Well, fine. However, there's a problem. The problem is they have convinced us that it is true. They have made us believe that this is all there is. Three dimensions, five senses, four walls. Isn't it? Most emphatically not. Jack, the four walls of materialism are the four walls of a prison. And the materialists are our jailers. Don't you see? They have put us in a prison. A prison of four walls. They don't want us to see what's beyond those walls. They don't want us to discover what, what lies outside their narrow philosophy. Okay, so I recommend this video, and I'm going to do a quick... Um, uh, it's longer, but I'll just do a quick commentary on what I, I think about it. Um, yeah, so that's a cool conversation. I believe that there's the material world and the uh, more. I think you can be bo both. I, that's my pushback. I... I my pushback on this, I bet Tolkien didn't even mean it the way that it could be interpreted, but just so to be clear, there, we, we do live in a prison cell in a way. Like the material world is real. Like there isn't just miracles happening all over the place and God isn't just like moving your keys. Uh, but there's also more. And I, I know there is. And I think when he says they want you to believe you're only in, a, in this four walls... I don't think it's uh, intentional. I think they believe it and they want, and they, and they find people that see past the walls as threats and painful and stupid and then they hate them. I don't think that there's this big plan. I think that that's, a, that, that's the difference between me and some of these guys that uh, think like the Jews are behind everything. Because I think some people have the assumption of a plan. Some people think in terms of plans. I don't think that's what it is. I think people project what they are onto others. It's kind of like when Whitney Cummings said that about me, about how when I made some money, I became a right winger and lost my mind and because I couldn't handle it. She, her world is money. So she saw that I was on a sitcom and she was like, oh, that money must have changed him. It didn't. I had development deals for years. It was having a baby. But she doesn't understand that because she doesn't have a baby. So she doesn't live in a world where she sees that like, the creation of life is way bigger than her uh, two broke girls checks. And so she put her worldview on me. And then the way I was acting made no sense because it was not under the um, frame of her life. And people that are just materialists, people that don't have any reference for God or I don't know. I, I, I'm just a dude, so I don't know what you guys believe or think. Or I'm only speaking on what I know. I'm not going to Godsplain you guys. 
And by the way, I don't, I, 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 I believe atheists, atheists as people can be extremely moral. It's just without belief in something more than our material world, I think it's a matter of time until it's all gone, all morality. And the world is just uh, about power acquisition. And a lot of people wrote about that during the World Wars because they saw it firsthand. Like they saw when man just becomes a, a, mean, a will to power. And um, that's why I get a little annoyed by Peter, or by um, Harris. And this is why I, there's a few atheists that I have a lot of respect for that were commenting to me. And I want to highlight some so I'm not, so I show like, the, the, how, like how to discuss things without becoming enemies. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I, I didn't take the right screenshots. Oh, this is a cool uh, quote, uh, comment, though. Someone wrote, faith in God or faith in the state, pick one. Humans are inherently programmed to worship a higher power than themselves. That's totally true. And that's what the Milgram experiment proves. Proved. And, um, and now when people worship science, that's why this uh, global warming thing is so... It's so crazy watching it from from a point of view where I don't worship science or the state. I think science is cool. Uh, but my faith is not in science because I know how fallible it is but based on who funds your research and how people want to interpret it and how governments want to manipulate it. Global warming is panning out to not being true. That's why they had to claim it, uh, change it to uh, climate change because there hasn't been global warming and all the predictions were wrong. And the fact that that doesn't give anyone pause means it's an ideology. It means it's kind of like, um, I don't know. I'm not going to do analogies, but you get it. I'm about to play the, rent, the wrenching. But what I was going to say about a cool way an atheist talked to me is an atheist said, Sam Harris is infuriating. A lot of us atheists find him infuriating. He misrepresents us because he, uh, this one atheist said, my morality is from Judeo-Christian values. And I know that. I'm just an atheist. And I found that to be very cool. I was like, like acknowledging things like that is the way you can have conversations with religious people because without acknowledging that, people think you're a liar because it's true. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Like these aren't inherent in us. Someone could be like a mother and her child. Yes, those are instincts. Thou shalt not kill your child. Thou shalt not steal from your child. I don't know. But seeing as a stepfather is 30 times more likely to molest or kill their stepchildren kind of cues you in that the motivation is more about a genetic bloodline than it is uh, inherent in us to not kill. In fact, it's inherent in us to kill. I'm a straight up killer. And I didn't know that. Or, and I couldn't really be... Uh, I couldn't really trust my thoughts until I admitted some some tough things about myself and human nature in general. Oh, this is my my sweet love is calling me. Oh, I'll, I'll answer after she knows I'm live streaming. She can uh, she can super chat me. I'm gonna text her uh, super chat me. I don't take calls anymore. <laughs> that that you're a killer who hasn't killed yet and human nature and and I think that's why uh, one reason why Nimmer has a. Uh, has like a different view on life than me a little bit is I think he saw so much firsthand in war and in seminary. He saw some hip hypocrisies in seminary and he saw some, some real will to power situations in war that uh, we have a slightly different take on life. But his is awesome too because I, I know in my heart and I know him well enough to know that he's not lying to me to manipulate me or to himself. He says some really tough realities and that's why Atheists and Christians can get along fine or agnostics or nimmers, which I don't even, I have no idea where he falls on a lot of things, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's respect for the obvious, respect for the obvious, the obvious that when atheism is is, is pushed on the people by a state, everyone dies, that our morality is derived uh, from Judeo-Christians. Some people be like, the Greeks, kind of. They fucked kids openly. So there's that. All right, let's read some of these super chats. Um, the wrenching really hurt really bad. Sore as hell right now. Mod me again too. Uh, I blame Nimmer. That's from Dom Networking Bear. Eh, maybe. 
I'm going to give the wrench back to Jew Bear. He was spiraling pretty bad, which means uh, maybe I shouldn't. And for those of you that don't know what the wrench, the wrench stuff is, I'm going to explain it and play this hilarious video. Anyone know which live stream has the story of the guy wandering from town to town, then he dies? Uh, I'll just put that video up, Bender Bear. My brother said that story. I'll, I'll put that video up so you guys can access it easier. I'm, I know I post a lot of videos now, but I, I want people to be able to get to the videos through the search algorithm because these streams... I do two hours a day. There's no way people can just like mine through them to find videos I use. So that's why I keep putting up videos. And one of the reasons I keep doing these thought videos, like uh, why leftism isn't crazy in this rebuttal to Harris is since uh, Amy and Walter are out of town. Uh, let me see if she texts. I'm just gonna make sure she's everything's okay. But um, I've been uh, getting back into my book and, and writing and thinking and so I've had time to just really, really dive into ideas. Uh, you good? All right. <laughs> Field of Bears. Hey, what's up, Field of Bears? Society's giving me mixed messages. Elementary school put me in a class to train me to actually look people in the eye during conversation, and now there's this rule. Do I look at you or not? Uh, no, you just don't listen to postmodernists or um, leftists because they're just trying to get things from you because they don't believe in truth. So do whatever you want, Field of Bears. And, but the problem is you have to face the consequences, much like Tommy Robinson currently is. But if they kill him, he'll die a hero. Which is more than a lot of these pathetic people who just go, he did break the law. <laughs> a coward dies a thousand deaths. Sam and Bear. Sam and Bear here. I'm on the Unbearables app. Oh, by the way, unbearablesapp.com. But not verified. Sending this to celebrate my 20% pay raise. Oh, sweet. Thank you, brother. Couldn't have haggled... That if your rants didn't, didn't help turn my life around. Thanks again and never stop telling your truth. I won't, my friend. You're the best. And, uh, and to celebrate my ridiculous amount of taxes I'm about to have to uh, pay this year, uh, I will accept it. Because taxes are just unbelievable. Every time you start thinking you're getting ahead in life, the government's like, half. And some of you guys have no idea what it feels like because you get paid by an employer. So sometimes you get taxes back because they take money out and then they give it back, kinda. Uh, and you also don't see how much your employer is taxed. When you get paid without taxes being taken out, like I have a corporation that just pays myself, so any money I make is just, and then quarterly I, I pay taxes and then one big tax, it's insane. It's like, it's insane. It, you can't imagine it. I, like I'll, I'll pay more in taxes this year than, uh, some most a good percentage of the population will pay in their entire life. And some people would then say, oh, well, that means you're doing really well. No, it means the government takes half. Half. That means you're doing so well. I mean, why not give it? Because I earned it. That's why. And because they take the money and they don't spend it well. If you if we all signed just I, I would sign a paper that said I will go to prison if I for the rest of my life, if I don't do what I'm about to say, I will give away every single penny I'm supposed to give to the government. Just let me choose where it goes. I would do it with joy. It's just, they, they're they just stealing the money. Like to look at Nancy Pelosi, she's worth like what? $200 million, just trying desperately to, to kill more babies later in pregnancies. And my money goes to that, that bitch. Uh, it's infuriating. It's, it's nonstop anger. So I'm an angry white man. That's why people say, oh, angry white men. Oh, yeah. By the way, white. I wonder what percentage of the population of, of our tax base is uh, white males. I'm just going to Google that real quick. And maybe that's why we're so damn angry all the time. Because we just got robbed over and over again. And the people that got the money don't seem to respect us very much. What percentage of the, pop, of the tax taxes... Do white males pay? Uh, let's see here. There's no way anyone's going to have that just out. Someone will know, though. Well, the top 20% of earners pay 84% of the income tax. Therefore, there is a privilege. It's poor privilege. And when someone says, oh, well, you have more, it's not just luck. Earners earn. They earn their money. 
Well, I mean, you have more. It's not just random. It's not like there's just random... Okay, if you just, like, stumble into a cave or something and there's gold everywhere, that's when you just, like, divvy it up. You're like, oh, everybody, let's all divvy it up. We all just walked in the cave at the same time. But if you earn the, the shit... Hang on. There's got to be... There's got to be... Uh, so what? Why uh, Let's see. There we go. White males. What do they pay? Uh, someone wrote. This says uh, white males pay eighty-eight percent of uh, taxes. Or is this eighty-three percent? I don't know. But somebody commented and said uh, it's our privilege. And someone said, and don't white people make up approximately 60% of the population? Yeah, well, that's also women. Don't get me wrong. My wife is completely involved in my uh, income. But uh, white males. <laughs> Let me see. And then people are going to blame the wage gap. Well, I don't know what, it's, it's the government wants an excuse to keep robbing us. That's why they keep saying, like, wage gap. That's why. No. They're stealing our money. Like, like. I'm constantly being mugged. And then they're like, why are you so angry? I don't know. I was just raped again. Imagine going up to a rape victim and being like, why are you so, why are you crying? She's like, I was raped. Someone's like, do you compare rape to taxes? Yes, I do. Uh, forced, forced acquisition of a resource without the will of the participant. Yes. Pretty much the same damn thing. That's why big government people all seem to be rapists. It's weird, right? All right. What about a postmodern Descartes? I think, therefore, I identify as. I think that your bear name is is right. It punchline bear. That was genius. I think, therefore, I, I identify as. Or how about I identify as? Therefore, I don't think. Whoa. Ken DV Gunbearer. Hey Owen, today's my wife Shelly's birthday. Can you give her a shout out and maybe come up with a birthday version of OTPH Day? She's on Twitter. Uh, if anyone wants to give, oh, I'm gonna, I'll say it out loud then. She's on Twitter at Teach Right Blog. If anyone wants to give her some love, everybody, this dude's awesome. Give his wife some birthday love at Teach Right Blog. I'd love to give her uh, a song. I just need more information. Email me. I like to do them live though. It's more exciting. Why didn't they laugh at gmail.com? If you want to uh, give me some more in intel, so I can I can make it good. Check out J.K. Chesterton, Orthodoxy, specifically the chapter Ethics of Elfland. Chesterton inspired both Tolkien and Lewis. Lewis became a Christian after reading The Everlasting Man by Chesterton. Chesterton is amazing. I got into Chesterton because of uh, Bayonet Bob, who runs uh, all my audio stuff. So go to uh, Why Didn't They Laugh is on iTunes and all that stuff. So grab it. And have you ever noticed that, 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 not, that people, that that's materialists, atheists, leftists, these people... Uh, don't comprehend good sometimes when they're like, they think everything's a scam and that everybody's always just trying to get stuff. And that like, if, if you're no longer getting powerful stuff, like being in movies or TV, like it's, it's, a, it's embarrassing. There's shame. It's because they don't comprehend not thinking that way. It, it's the same reason why the left is obsessed with calling everyone racist because they only see the world as race. I'm so damn sick of this race talk. I fucking hate it. It's like, well, as a black, it's like, I, I used to never think about people's races. It was, it was so peaceful. And then Obama came in with his plans, man, that Sal Alinsky shit. It, it works fucking great, but it only works if your goal is the annihilation of, uh, of good for the resource acquisition. I want Sam Harris to tell a Greek or Aztec myth that can inform his morality. Most Greek demigods killed their children, wives, or both. Aztecs killed children, enemies, and cut out live beating hearts. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Sam Harris told the world to not to lie to their children. Somebody says, said, how do I teach my, my seven-year-old about determinism? And he said, lie. And people laughed like it was a joke, but those are the type of jokes... There's a million different types of jokes and some are to say uncomfortable truths and, and socially be able to say an uncomfortable truth. And um, that was the uncomfortable truth because there really is no way to teach your child about determinism. 
Because A, I don't think determinism exists, and I don't think some would be like, oh yeah, well, you were pre-programmed to even say the words you are right now. Then, then bourdain yourself. Why be alive then? Well, I wasn't pre-programmed. That's a trick so that people don't have to face morality, so that people can just suck and get sucked and jerk and fuck and snort and fuck and suck and be like, hey, this isn't me doing it. It's science. <laughs> job didn't deserve face boils from God. Job. I always spell Job with an E because I think job always confuses me. But that's why I'm a horrible speller. Because I think I have the right to do that. Subconsciously. And that's why I never really learned how to spell words. Because I'm like, it doesn't sound like that. Alright. Job didn't deserve face boils from God. Well, Old Testament God uh, taught a lot of people about not that... It's not about deserving. It's about survival. And, and when people quote the Old Testament, it's like how, how, uh, how cruel God was. It's like, no, that was a time when everyone died a lot and there was no civilization. And so those rules had to be followed or everyone died. And, and everyone still died, even if you tried to follow the rules. And Abraham still made a lot of mistakes. And uh, maybe he should have hung out more with... Uh, Ishmael, you know, there, there's a lot of gray areas, but at the same time, it's, uh, it sets up the ability to then be free and be good. But if we give up our freedoms and we give up our responsibility to, to bear pain, you know, cross, the reason the cross, people wear the cross and revere the cross, because it reminds you that life is about bearing pain. It's about that you will hurt. And when you acknowledge that, when you know that, like, look at my career. When you say, uh, when you say power and money isn't worth it and I will take pain to stand up for what I believe in, that is how you get freedom. And I have freedom, but it's also painful. And I'm called human garbage a thousand times a day. And I'm not allowed on Twitter, which is humiliating if I, if I put my... Um, if I put what, uh, my self-image in what other people think of me, being kicked off Twitter is humiliating. Like, 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 it's like wearing a dunce cap. and it, it, It's like, hey, there's hundreds of millions of people on Twitter, but you're too bad to be here. And to think of all the people that have come to my shows and all the people that have shaken my hands and hugged me and taken pictures, and now they see me and they'd go, he isn't even allowed on Twitter? But fortunately, I don't take my self-image or my how I view myself on that. If I feel like it's unjust, do it. Kick me out of hell, you know? And I do miss Twitter only because I miss being able to see the feedback of jokes. Instagram isn't really made for it. I try to make it for it. Uh, but And then people go, get on Gab. Gab is a little intense. Twitter is so big that I really could have an idea and put it up there and uh and see what people said and see if, if it related to people and and see what the idea like how it would go and 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 people that I looked up to would follow me and then we could talk to each other and stuff like that like it was fun for someone like me it was a big sacrifice and uh but you got to be like fine take it that you have to think that way or else you just become one of these these devils, man. And um, you just start losing your mind. And a sane man looks crazy from the point of view of crazy. And I guess it's what your definition of crazy is. And that's where Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris got in that big argument. Was Peterson was saying, well, Sam, I understand what Sam was saying. That like sane is being able to measure things, material, science. And that they're true, great. But sane is also knowing that when certain things are implemented, human beings break down. And that there must be some illogical or irrational elements of life that are sane. Because when people try to implement a, a perfectly sterile of God, purely science, purely rational world, they either kill themselves or they kill everyone else or they just start killing Jews or Ukrainians. And so if you truly are science-minded and you understand uh, causal relationships, you have to see that. 
Saw JPP last night. He made a joke about how lies turn into giant chickens that rumble over the hills to kill you. Thought it was a hilarious concept. I have to really, that to me sounds like it was translated from Russian. You know, like, I don't get that. Hang on. He made a joke about how lies turn into giant chickens that rumble over hills to kill you. I mean, that's psychedelic. I, I like it, but I don't quite get it. Can I be verified as just a bear? Love your streams. Feel like I'm doing something productive with my brain while at work. Yeah, welcome, just a bear. Yeah, and I love doing these every day. It's like the, it's like the radio show. You know, I got a lot of criticism early on where people are like, you're flooding your YouTube, bro. Like, you do a live stream every day. Like, come on. Make us want it a little bit. It's like, now, I grew up with Howard Stern live in the morning. Do four hours every morning. It's cool. It's, it's part, like, if people that I follow don't do stuff every day sometimes, I'm like, come on. You know, like, my favorite podcast of all time is probably Hardcore History. And the fact he does one every six months makes me, like, not even... I'm like, dude, come on. I've re-listened to a lot of them, but like, it, it, it just gets a little, you just start kind of drifting. I'm like, every six months, dude, what do you think, we're a tortoise? How fucking much time do you think we have on this planet? I get why he does it, though. He likes to really be precise, but I mean, come on. Do you really have to be that precise when you're just talking about fucking, you know, the ancient Celts? Take all the wrenches away. No, no, Dom, just yours. Dom can't even get that last cent. That's hilarious. A great... Hang on. A great, uh, a great guy to look up is Douglas Wilson on YouTube. He also has several books on manhood, homeschooling, and classical education. Thank you, Jennifer. Captain Spire. Don't burn yourself out. Give yourself time to rest. I've been watching some of your old skits and can hear the tension between people who want to laugh and folks who want to be offended. All right, I don't see those together. Are those two different thoughts? Because I'll address both. All right, don't bring yourself out. Give yourself time to rest. I have been. I've been sleeping eight hours a night, which has been phenomenal. And my rest is thinking. That's my static state. Like if I'm a manatee, just kind of like my natural state is thinking. Like yesterday I shot the bow for an hour. You know, I just got a thousand bullets to like just shoot a 22 for like hours. But while I'm doing that, I'm thinking. Or if I'm just playing piano, I'm thinking. So if it appears that like I'm, I'm thinking too much or something, that's my natural state. Like when elephants are just like sleeping, standing up, if that was me, I'd be like, why do leftists think the way they think? I, I'm a puzzle solver. And it, and it isn't stressful to me. It just is my nature. It's way more stressful for me to pretend I'm somebody I'm not. This is me exactly. And um, when I'm with my family, I am less like this. But still, it's still the same thing. I still kind of talk about this stuff to Amy. She just kind of is like, oh, no way. And I'm like, yeah, right? <laughs> so the next thing, I've been watching some of your old skits and can hear the tension between people who want to laugh and folks who want to be offended. Offended is just about control. Offended doesn't mean a thing. If I'm not offended by, by Sam Harris saying that Christians basically believe in Spider-Man and it's a dangerous idea that should be eradicated, that my, the fact that I'm Christian is worse than rape, what the hell is offended? I mean, I just see that as like something to think about and rebut. So when people are offended by a joke, like that, that like... What I just talked about and what I've been like rebutting is not joking. So I'm not going to use that as a crutch. And in that realm, people have way more of a right to be offended because it's absolutely like what you're saying you really believe. In humor, people do not have a right to be offended ever because you don't always know the joke. You don't know that maybe the joke wasn't written properly. Assuming the intention of the joke teller is death to comedy because... What if he just misses the joke? Or what if you miss the joke? Jokes are supposed to either be the opposite of what someone believes to kind of reveal an irony. Overly exaggerated, under, overly exaggerated, under exaggerated, or uh, sarcastic, which is also an inherent irony. So if you take any of that literally, and then you assume the intention of the speaker, you have no right to do that. Because that isn't like what it is. That's like saying that... Uh, 
that, that Leonardo DiCaprio is uh, a racist because he said nigger 200 times in Django Unchained. And someone could be like, but he's an actor. It's like, but I'm a comedian. It, it, it's like, that's, a, that's my art form. Like, acting, it, you're just as responsible for your words in acting as a comedian is for his jokes because it isn't you. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense to people, but it's just trust me on this one. It's true. We're, we're being like the comedian is you and the actor is you like you bring your um, your experiences to the role. Uh, a comedian brings his view of the world to the joke, but the joke isn't from him. It isn't like this is what I think. Like Leonardo DiCaprio did a great job in that movie because that guy would have said nigger hundreds of times. He owned slaves. He did it great. If you assume he's a racist for that, which people did and protested him, you're wrong. All right, Punchline Bear. As a quarter Mexican, will the new cub be an unbearable news anchor baby? Hilarious. N another great punchline. BMX Bear. I'm getting married today. I'm going to see Jordan Peterson tonight with my wife. He really helped open my eye to, eyes to what really is important in life. Thank you, and congratulations, and enjoy Peterson. Um, your broke ass glasses are racist. I don't know what that means, Raymond, but, uh, all right. Jay, lots of atheists like to point out that Alicia and the bear is absurdity in the Bible. The story really shows what happens when you defy a man of God. Atheists like to point out a lot of shit they don't understand. And I feel pretty good about pointing out the flaws of atheism after watching Sam Harris's Description of atheism simply being that it's nothing. I know nothing, so therefore I can criticize atheism. Religion is complicated and deep and profound, and there's a lot to it. So when he tries to criticize religion, he's not an expert on religion. I'm an expert on atheism because I know what nothing is. And so if atheism truly is nothing, we're all experts on atheism. It's just nothing. It's a vacuum. It's nothing. So I'm an expert at nothing because I'm retarded. <laughs> All right, Coder Bear, do you want a Twitter proxy, something to let you use an account without them knowing it's you? I already have one. It's um, at Owen Comedy, run by the beautiful and brilliant Dolev. Um, yeah, out of Israel, which is hilarious. They're like, is Owen in Israel now? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm part of Mossad. I'm Twitter Mossad. That's pretty much just to know like when something comes out or when I'm live streaming and stuff like that. But I, I just miss being able to say ridiculous things at any hour of the day just to see. It, it, it was a way to stress test ideas. But it's not that I mourn my ability to be on Twitter. I mourn Twitter itself because um, it's dying. Like once you kick out people like me, it's now not fair. Like once you let one team juice in the Olympics, it all goes to shit. Once you allow men to run as women... Um, uh, it's tra uh, trans women. Like I'll give you a, where is it? Where is it? I don't know. That could have been good timing, but I, I don't see the, huh. yeah, like two men just beat are now like fastest and second fastest, uh, sprinters and some thing. And everyone's freaking out because their girls tried so hard. Well, girls are fucked now. So enjoy equality girls because you're slower and, and, uh, weaker. And uh, you'll never be strong or fast again because you're now going to be competing against men who biologically forever will be stronger and faster than you. And we can throw farther and we can just react faster and we uh, can throw harder punches, kicks. So enjoy equality. It means you're now second best forever. Or we could have just kept knowing that men and women are different biologically and deserve respect. And we should not put one or the other above or below the other. That's, that's what white supremacy is. That's what racism is. It's very rare. It's, it's, it's the belief that one race is inherently better than another. It's not the acknowledgement of difference or else medicine can't, can't function. An African-American gets a different prescription than a Caucasian American if they have the same uh, illness in certain situations because one, well, it'll kill them if they don't. 
So that means there's a difference. Uh, but now, racism or white supremacy, which gets thrown around all the time, even though you never hear black supremacy, even though there's something called the five percenters, hilarious, but uh, is when you say you're better. If you say men are better, women are better. Women inherently are better. That's bullshit. Whites are better. Blacks are better. No, that's different, different, different. And that, and there's a humility with the religious, I think, that the atheists don't have, where they say, who the hell am I to say what's better? You just kind of say what is and just say God has a plan and just keep fucking digging your hole. This is from Nate Bar- uh, Barker. For about nine months, I work roughly 90 hours a week. I'm taxed so heavily that it makes more sense to work two small jobs. I feel punished by the government to have found a job that allows me to work the overtime to provide for my family. Bear skills. Bro, I get it, my friend. Uh, yeah, the government incentivizes unemployment. And uh, it sucks. And all the people that, that receive all the money that we get from working so hard, they, uh, they, they hate us for it. Because no one likes that. No one li- tr- truly likes enabling. Like just enabling, being like, it doesn't matter if you work, here's money. People like help. People like, if it's like, oh, dude, you just hit a rough spot. Here's help. Then they're like, thank you. I won't let you down. We'll crush. People don't like trust funds. It ruins their soul. And then they hate their, have you ever noticed the people that hate their dads the most are the ones who got money from their dads? That the people that get like, daddy sent me a check again. I hate daddy. It's, it, it's, it's not money that ruins families. It's um, enabling. It's saying, here's five grand a week, uh, and this will explain why you don't ever see me or I don't care about you. That's, that's death in a family. Money, does not, um, uh, money is not a good exchange for love or time or respect. And so the government is doing that to poor people right now. They're like, just, they're like here's some more uh, money for your, your high tops and your CDs. And uh, we're just not going to give you any skills to ever get out. And that's why I'm not really feeling the IQ stuff these days, even though all my friends are high IQ people because it's just more fun to be around. And I don't mean high like crazy high. I just mean I don't have any friends that are like dumb because it's just too hard to be around them. They don't understand jokes. But when you find out that inner city Baltimore schools, uh, 3%... Of the graduating classes of this one school can even read. Zero can pass any like um, fucking state sponsored exam or whatever. And none of them know anything about math, right? That's not an IQ situation, guys. And and to think that it is, is just as much of a, of a bullshit excuse as saying white privilege. It's these kids aren't being taught how to survive. A lot of them don't have dads. And a lot of them, and then they just go to school and they learn nothing that will help them. And, uh, and so in response, daddy government gives them a check so they can buy more uh, Snickers bars and high tops. And, uh, and they hate the government for them, but they need the government. That's why they say, Donald Trump is Hitler, now give him your guns. It's like, I need you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you. There, there's legitimately a borderline personality disorder starting to uh, happen with the government and, and poor people. And then rich people, or just people that earn, and by the way, I'm not rich. I mean, compared to like rich, I mean, I'm doing fine, but it's like any earners just are like, fuck you guys. You're going to take my money and then ruin people's lives with it. All right. James Coleman, my ex had borderline personality disorder. I wanted to be with her forever, but that's weird. I didn't, uh, this is written before I just said that. But people around her were against me. <clears throat> but people around her were against me. What is your opinion for living with someone who you love is mentally ill? <clears throat> I don't know anything about it. I don't think you should uh, stay with someone with borderline personality disorder. It's too hard. It'd be too hard on children. I think that uh, I don't. I don't have the ability of saying what to do. Sorry, buddy. I want to be with her forever, but people around her were against me. If people around her were against you, they might know something you don't. Or maybe she doesn't even have borderline personality disorder. Maybe the people around her are driving her crazy. Maybe her environment is so toxic 
that you giving her authentic love is seen as a threat to the see I don't know enough and if I were to just give you advice based on that I would be uh, negligent so sorry buddy good luck to you and uh, just don't think you have to save people when it comes to love because if you are in a relationship where you think you have to save the person that's not love There'll be times when you have to save the person you love, but the whole thing shouldn't be based around saving. Ken, check your email. If you need more intel, let me know. I will, brother. Can you play The Scientist by Coldplay? Questions of science, science, and progress. Sure. I'll put in new words. in the sky you tell me of science science and progress what the hell is that um and I say do you think Stalin was a good guy you say things like straw man or, or that I'm a moron you're not using those words accurately. I tell you a faith that can't be proven. You now have just blocked me. Nobody said it was easy for eight billion people to get along. Sam Harris is a fucking retard. There you go. Big Bear, keep up the good fight. Uh, look into Jesse Lee Peterson. Great dude. Uh, hang on a second. Sorry, my thing. Sorry, my guy. I think I got that mumble from Norm MacDonald. He's like, hey, hey. I've listened to his book on tape so many times that it just got stuck in my head. It's like, all right. Great dude, buy yourself a brew. Favorite horror movie? Uh, I don't like horror movies, but the one that scared me the most and I thought was the most well done was uh, Pet Cemetery. I thought it dove into a real thing. It was Abraham and uh, and Isaac. It was, uh, he wanted his son to come back more than he wanted to stay good. And that ended up killing everyone. That was a biblical story. All right, Jennifer, the cross is actually a huge symbol of social rejection. Society rejected the Son of God and gave social approval to a known rapist and murderer. Wow. <clears throat> Reminder, read Nassim Taleb's Skin in the Game. Thank you, Bronson. I have so much reading right now that uh, a little overwhelmed at the moment. Everybody keeps... Oh, I'll open some packages today, too. Tommy Robinson was transferred from a medium to high security prison with 71% Muslim population because his status in the prison system was intentionally removed from the list of high-risk prisoners. I know. And someone was reporting that in at a, at a government panel thing, and her microphone was turned off mid-sentence. It was creepy. Atheist unicorn BS. And dictionary equals one-horned animal. Atheist unicorn BS. And dictionary. I don't know what that means, showing. When someone says you need to die because of what you believe, that's not an offense. That's inciting a threat can say what he wants, and I can say fuck him. Totally. I straight up don't like the guy. I think he's a douche. And I think the fact that, that high-level thinkers have told me I, 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 I can't make fun of him because it, it's, bad, it's like bad for their brand, I'm like, bitch, I'm about to just start like nonstop making fun of him. Like, do people not know me? It's so weird. Like, you get flack when you're over a target. If someone says, like, just something mild about Sam Harris. And, 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 like, and so many people were like, hey, man, you're, like, part of something bigger than yourself. Like, we're the thinkers. I'm like, the thinkers? 
Wait a minute. So it's a collectivized group of free thought. Are you listening to yourselves? Dude, so many people get tricked by power. It's fucking crazy. As soon as they start getting attention, I think that's why I'm more able to, uh, to stay a little more true to the path is because I've gotten so much fucking attention my whole career, just being on TV and in movies and doing stand up that like, it's not this big shift for me. It's not like people start giving a scientist a lot of attention and then before they know it, they're fucking Bill Nye being like, what do you want me to say, master? Gender doesn't exist in two year olds. Will I still get the eyeballs that I, 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 I need so much? Cause I used to like that guy back in the day when he was just Bill Nye the science guy. All right. Hey, Big Bear, do you have any advice for an open mic comedian working out of Soyland, Oregon? <laughs> How to navigate the minefield of offense while learning? I have advice for you. Uh, be in touch with me. Oh, I'm going to turn on the bear phone. I've neglected my beautiful bear phone because I will be living in the Northwest and I am looking to help other comedians' careers. Oh, and just do not bend one knee. No, there's no place more ready to laugh than Soylent. Whether it's Oregon or Washington or New York or all those places, it's like they're dying for it. And so if you just get through the looking glass, you're fine. Excuse me. It's hard as fuck, though. Smash that. Oh. That guy's a dick. Hey, Owen, can you get on Bill Warner for an interview? You and the Bears could find a use from his knowledge on political Islam. P.S. Bear with honor. Welcome, Bear with honor. Uh, Bill Warner, you and the Bears could find a use from his knowledge on political Islam. I definitely would do a show. Just just you you do it, though. Because I... If, if you... Uh, Hang on. All right, sweet. We got some uh, some text. Email you Bourdain poem. Oh yeah. Oh, and by the way, something I'm working on. Bare phone's officially active. And sweet. Bare phone's on. Some people. I got a lot of like really heartfelt. Oh, this is a good one from Josh Grani Bear. Power is is the engine. Uh, hang on a second. One second, guys. Oh, dude, I neglected the, the bear phone. It's it's now going to take a while to load because there's so many messages. Hmm. Hypocrisy is the tribute that evil... It's just going so fast. I can't even read it yet. Uh, it's going to take some time. All right, what was I talking about? Um, don't know. Don't know. Let me see if Amy's cool. You're streaming today. Yes, I am, Nimmer. Yeah, while I was just wanting to talk to you, uh, I missed the, the morning Wally talk because I didn't have the writing and I, uh, I was out of my rhythm. I'll talk to him after. He can watch Daddy Crush. He was watching my stream the other day and just going, sweet dad dad, sweet dad dad. It's pretty funny. I got to remember to not swear. Um, can you verify me as Bear Balls? Also, I'd love to help you set up a show in Bozeman. I'd love to, Todd, and wel uh, welcome Bear Balls. Owen, please welcome and verify my identical twin, Kim, as Blunty Bear. Welcome, Buddy Bear. We love you and are watching together. Love to the family and the dogs. Thank you very much. I've been running George hard. You want to just see a quick video of George? All right, check this out. This is a, this is a happy boy. Look at how green that is. That's why I love the Adirondacks. It's like it, when, when it's not winter, it's just the greenest. You guys want to see the happiest possible animal you've ever seen. And there it is. Happy, 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 Georgie, Georgie. Yeah, we just cruise around the, the woods a lot. It's a good time. Uh... I'm going to play the wrench, the wrenching soon. Don't worry, guys. It's going to be great. Thanks. I still miss her. I don't want to save her. I just loved her. By the way, I think you can be an atheist without hating religion. Oh, yeah. I hope I address that properly. Because I know some really cool people that are atheists. And the reason I find them cool is because they're not like Sam Harris. They're not like, religion is for idiots, lunatics, and anyone that isn't me. I mean, Trump, I, I just, I'm not even buying that he's good at meditation. It's, how are you good at meditation and that wiry? 
Spider-Man is a moral dude. WTF. I know. That's the whole thing. It's a hero's journey. Fucking ungrateful fucks. How do you know when to cut ties of a leftist friend? Oh, real quick. Oh, I still miss her. I, I didn't want to save her. I just loved her. It's tough, man. It's tough. I've, uh, I've been in situations like that, and I'm, gl I'm glad they didn't work out. I'm glad I am with Amy. But to be honest, when me and Amy first started dating, we both could have described each other as mentally ill. <laughs> but that's why I'm not really buying a lot of mental illness claims. I'm sure there are some. There's some people that I think they just really do have some sort of, maybe there's a pressure in their brain or some kind of thing. It's not my expertise, but one thing I do know is a lot of people that are told they have ADHD or depression or bipolar or all that stuff are just somehow living a life that isn't fitting their biology. It's like the, the experiment with the mice and cocaine where in captivity, a mouse when given cocaine will just take cocaine till they die. And the scientists, when given just reverence, were like, this proves that addiction is real and that even these mice are cokeheads. No, because mice in their natural habitat did coke once, had one really bad idea, and then never did it again. And that, that more of is a statement on, uh, on, on being confined. That in a confined world, in a confined space, whether it's mentally, emotionally, physically, uh, spiritually, Politically confined. And so many people right now are confined. If you say this, we hate you. If you say this, you'll lose your job. If you are this white man, black man, white man. That's why I think addiction's going up, heroin's going up, suicide's going up. It's because just like the mice, you get compulsive. Because you're trying to almost kill yourself because you want to be free so bad. And that, I hope, is one thing that this stream does for people. They tell me it does. But I hope it's it's true is uh, it's a little dose of freedom, you know, a little dose of, of someone who's willing to say whatever without being a dick. But if I'm a dick, I'm a dick. Oh, what I was saying is uh, people were writing me these suicide letters, not that they were going to kill themselves, about how their parent would kill uh, had killed themselves and how much it devastated them, and how much um, what I said about Anthony Bourdain being a coward meant a lot to them, and that they're glad someone finally said what they had to live through. And I just, to a couple people, I just said, hey, can you read this and send me the audio? Because I'm going to do an, um, a song with it. Like a song with the actual people saying their words. Just like some thing. Because I want people to hear it from the kids that are now adults. And uh, that's what time travel is. You know, time travel is talk to the, the kids now. And see how, how sexy it is. Like, see how, uh, dude, I just sent one. What's the best place to send? Uh, why didn't they laugh at gmail.com? Like, when you, when you glorify it, it's, uh, it's really horrifying. And, and when people say, they said the same thing about, um, the fuck is that guy's name? Jesse Thorne's trans five-year-old. They're like, how dare you, Owen? His... His child will see this and hear this and, and they will be in pain because of you. You hate children. They're doing that with the Bourdain thing. That thing's now at 200,000 views in like two days or something. And people are either love it or they hate it. When they hate it, they say, Anthony Bourdain's daughter will see you say this and she will feel pain. You should kill yourself. And I'm like, guys, you want to time travel? Talk to that daughter when when she's an adult oh if you you don't want to put in that you don't want to put in that effort do you well i'll do it for you what he just did was so selfish what if she hates her dad oh i know there's there's the 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 giant probability is that these children hear something someone like me say that and they go finally thank you my brother did that once some um crazy trans couple gay weirdos that, that there was this kid with them that they had adopted and they were like just being such dicks to the kid like oh used i can't remember the story so I, I i'm gonna ask him before i really retell it but i remember the kid after it was all over after my brother stood up for the kid and those 
people called my brother like an angry white man. How dare you? This is a hate crime, all that. The kid wrote to my brother like, um, that meant the world to me. I, I feel like I can wake up tomorrow again. Like these kids have no one standing up for them at all. And, 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 and abuse is hidden as abuse. You know, or, or ethics are, are uh, presented as abuse by the abusers. Like abusers, if you stand up and say, why does your five-year-old have a black eye? And it goes, how dare you hurt my child? It's like, you just hurt my child. All right. What was I just doing? Oh, how do you know when to cut ties to a leftist friend? I find so many of my friends trapped in the victimhood mentality. It's maddening. Hashtag free Tommy. When you don't want to hang with them anymore. That's when to do it. it there isn't like a, a line. If your friend is like occasionally brings something up that you disagree with and you're like, yeah, OK, buddy, just just read some stuff. And it's like, all right. All right, you gun toting redneck and you're like all right you socialist fucking retard but as soon as it becomes not enjoyable where you can't have enjoyable conversations then just don't be friends with them it's not about like not being friends with people on the left i think that's a little weird uh because some people just don't care that much and it's not really anything but if somebody is uh makes it so being around them sucks or they keep like uh, calling you names, not in a funny way, but in like, they like condescend all your opinions. That That's toxic for you, you know? Bare phone message. All right, let me take a look. Well, there's, there's, there's just so many now that... It's just kind of like unbelievable. Oh, Appliance Bear says, I think you're right about Judd. Oh, well, I just said Judd has like creepy like Gropey, kitty eyes, but alleged to me and my thoughts. Lazy Eye Bear, be careful of Poison Oak when you run George in Washington Woods. Hopefully it's not as bad as Oregon. Thank you. Cowboy Bear. Hey, I used the battery backup yesterday for the second time. Kept the basement dry during... Oh, sweet. I have a tentative venue for you on Saturday, 6.30 or Saturday... Oh, dude, I'm out of the touring business right now until my baby comes and is healthy. And uh, then I'll be back into it. Did you catch Ruben on Rogan? Or more importantly, did you catch the part where Ruben asked if Rogan was in the intellectual dark web? What's up, group chat with Weinstein bros? Good Lord, I would love to be in that chat room. Uh, yeah, I was talking about it a lot. I, uh, I'm a big fan of those guys. You know, I'm a fan of Rogan and Ruben and the Weinstein bros and all those guys. I just, uh, I'm, I don't know. I'm just going to do some pushbacks on some things that are almost starting to become a canon amongst those who don't believe in canons. Hmm. When are you going to swap cast with Nimmer? Uh, as soon as he apologizes for stealing my bike. I know he didn't do it, but someone of his race did, therefore he's wrong. Isn't that how this works? So that means Nimmer stole my bike, I made Nimmer a slave, and... Jews control the weather. So as soon as that's all worked out, I'll do his thing. Roy Bear, not buying it was a suicide, autoerotic asphyxiation. I, my percentages, 5% murdered by Clinton's, Mossad for Weinstein, or whoever, Weinstein, or whoever the hell was, uh, people were paying to back him. Some sort of weird conspiracy, because that Asia lady is just, she looks like she's, uh, associates with some real intense characters. Like, I'm not ruling it out. I just, there's no evidence, but, you know, auto asphyxiation, I'd give five, maybe a little more. I'd say 93% he just committed suicide. And then there's a little error of, uh, I feel like most people who auto, auto asphyxiate themselves are, aren't going to die. They're not, they're pretty good at it, I'm guessing. Uh, I've never done it because, um, uh, I always felt jerking off was such a crazy win to begin with that I almost, I almost don't even deserve it. It feels weird. And I like to keep my jizz because it, it gives me strength. Uh, I don't like to just waste it. But he would have had to like slip. I don't know. I just think sometimes conspiracy theories are used in place of addressing the, the darkness of life that sometimes horrible things just happen. But at the same time, 
I don't like it when people just dismiss conspiracy theories without knowing anything. That's also weird to me. When people are like, dude, he just killed himself. There's no way he was murdered. You're like, are you also going to tell me that I can't criticize Sam Harris for some reason? Uh, you're a D, a dick, but with a damn good heart, that's more important than politeness. Stay awesome, dude. Yeah, politeness, I think, is not a virtue. I don't like centrism. I think over time, centrism gets a little annoying. Like when people agree with everybody and try to be liked by everybody. I'm like, fuck you, man. Like that even happened with uh, with Burt Kreischer. And I love Burt Kreischer. It's not a knock on Burt, but when he was like, that one podcast I did, I should get a clip of that, where he was like, uh, you know, I don't use the C word because it dehumanizes people. And I was like, some people deserve to be fucking dehumanized. Or he goes, I don't want to dehumanize people. And I'm like, I do. And he just started like crying laughing because he knew I was right. And I'm like, no, no, I want to fucking sometimes say the worst shit I can possibly say to somebody. That's in me. It's in you. It's in Sam Harris. Uh, so why not admit that? Like if I call someone a vicious name that is intended to hurt them very badly, it's because I want to hurt them very badly. It's not because I think I'm better than them as a demographic. That's how the left thinks. Thanks for Dose of Freedom, Big Bear. Oh, anytime, Blue Sky Bear. Oh, and I just did uh, uh, three episodes of Freedom Tunes. I just recorded the audio yesterday. So keep an eye out. They're hilarious. Seamus is uh, a, good, a good guy. Hey, Owen, how is the cut on your foot? I recently cut my leg at work and could have used stitches but didn't. Made me think of you. It's fine. You don't need stitches. Just put a maxi pad on it. Uh, James, thanks, man. Good hearing the opinions of an unfiltered human. Knowing it's all honesty. Have a great day, mate. Yeah. And it's not like I'm not capable of uh, little bits of uh, dishonesty. It's, it's a process. Don't think that I'm just this pure source of unfiltered honesty. Because I find myself occasionally like smidging directions. And I try to keep that as in check as humanly possible. Because I feel like... The most powerful language, in a good way, not powers and oppression, but in like, the most effective language that will lead you to the best life is honest. But occasionally, you know, just like little things. But it always starts with the little things. You know, the little tiny ones, where it's like, if I'm late for something, I'll exaggerate something. I'll be like, oh, I, I, I couldn't get off the phone with my mom. Sorry, it took me a little while. But I was on the phone with my mom for like 20 minutes. You know, like shit like that. Where I know I misrepresented my words just to not have to deal with something. So just know that I'm not this like guy that's just incapable of lying because that isn't possible. But I'm trying pretty fucking hard at being as honest as humanly possible. All right, loved your Sam Harris video. He's kind of lost in what he's trying to convey since Peterson dug a bit deeper. Well, yeah, he doesn't have a response and he's spiraling. Because it's the same problem with him and politics, just like a lot of these people. It's all he has is he hates Trump. And then that's why I say, but Hillary, and people say, well, it's not just about him or Hillary. And you go, no, we American people were given two options, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. So you chose Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump. Um... You hate both. So what, who would you want as president? And, and they have nobody. And that really started to, sh to reveal a whole mindset of it. Cause it's, it's exactly like atheism. It's atheism is the lack of existence. Determinism is the lack of existence. It means I am not here. Atheism means there is no God. And wh so what is there? Nothing. Determinism. There is no will. Nothing I'm doing, I'm in control of. So what is there? Nothing. I hate Trump. So who do you love? Who do you support? Who would you want as a leader? No one. You, you understand? No one's drawn to that anymore. It was... Harris was originally charismatic and had a draw because people thought that... In the beginning, I felt atheists were ballsy because I was raised in a town where everybody was Catholic, and to say you weren't Catholic, you were seen as an outcast. So just the natural rebel in me, if someone said there's no God and faced consequences, I was like, respect. 
You know, it, I, I didn't believe it, but I believed in the person. I was like, they're facing consequences for what they believe. I love that. Now it's the opposite. Now any of that draw to the anti-religious uh, four horsemen of, of, the, of the atheist apocalypse, whatever they call themselves, this sarcastic, shitty, you know, troll title is not that alluring to people because they're like, okay, with the absence of religion, we kind of, we followed you, Sam Harris. What now? We're just seeing society fall apart and words mean nothing. And now the church has been replaced by the state who is driving our debt into infinity and no one is happy and everyone's agitated and no one has children and all the women are at work and abortion, abortion, abortion. What do we do, Sam Harris? And he just goes, ask Spider-Man. And we're like, you got to be kidding me. This was the end. This was, this was what we find out. And then Peterson was just like, carry your load. Life sucks. Damn it. And everyone's like, thank you, Peterson. Uh, holding onto your jizz causes insanity. Clean out the pipes and clear the mind. Your insanity is my sanity. Listen, I've cleaned the pipes before. God darn it. Oh, and can I address something? I don't consider saying God damn it taking the Lord's in name in vain. I think taking the Lord's name in vain is God says, give me your watch. Taking the Lord's name in vain means you take the, the Lord's name, which is re revered, and you get something for it that isn't, like, that's just for yourself. Saying God damn it is just like saying Gosh darn it. It's the same exact thing. I find that almost teetering on on PC thought, where if you change one word or one letter in a word that everyone knows what you're saying, you somehow change the word. Like that, or change the meaning. That doesn't mean anything. And I don't, I obviously don't, I'm not saying God damn this thing. I think that that concept started when people would say God damn it, they meant literally God damn it. Like if you stubbed your toe, you're like, God damn the couch. And people are like, what has the couch done? Jebediah, do not damn the couch. The couch has not broken the covenant. You, you stubbed your toe on the couch. If you had walked a little better, he's like, God damn this couch. And it's like, huh? No one means that anymore. It's just like bless you came from the, uh, the plague. When someone sneezes, you say bless you because you thought they were going to die a plague. So that's all I mean. And, it, it, and if I felt like it was very important uh i would not do you know i wouldn't say it but i don't i think it's weird i think it's a weird i don't think it shows reverence but i respect others that don't say that but just know that i'm not really trying to damn things when i say that like i'm not speaking to god it's a it's a it's almost like how black dudes will say no i'm saying they go Hey man, know what I'm saying? I, I came here, know what I'm saying? I, I, I grab a beer, know what I'm saying? And then my boy came down, know what I'm saying? They're not really asking you if you know what they're saying or else you would constantly respond. It's kind of like if you're like, you know, if you're going down on somebody and they keep saying your name, don't say what. If someone's like, Owen, don't be like, what? They're not really saying Owen. And that's kind of uh how I feel about it. Someone just said it's just not respectful. Well, un unless you tell me why, I'm not just going to go with that. And that's like one of the whole problems with religion that can be happen is um, people just start saying, stop, start saying, well, it's just not good. Okay. And then people go, ah, all right. Atheism. Just, just seriously. Don't be like those guys. <clears throat> Like it, it all, it, religion can have the same Achilles heel. It's not nearly as bad as atheism. The, the institutional Achilles heel of power of man, because you still have to pray and, and you, and you, it is humbling and utopia will never be on earth. And if you're shamed, it's typically into being a more um, ordered and civilized person. So I'm not comparing the two. But religion does also have that trait where they can just be like, just don't say it, okay? I'm like, what, retarded? It's like, no, you can say that. I hate the PC people. But don't say, God damn it, when you stub your toe. It's like, why? It's like, it's just not respectful. It's like, why? 
Because like, you're taking the Lord's name in vain. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm not speaking to God. That's just what everyone I knew growing up said when they stubbed their toe. And now I just say it. Or else I will just start. I w- if people want to do that to me, just know I know the origins of so many words that I will fuck up your whole day. If you start saying stuff to me about word origins, I'll just start being like, oh, you know where that word came from? Well, back when they used to rape kids. And then you just can't talk. So that's a great, great idea. Just saw a sawbuck for the honey jar. Just a sawbuck for the honey jar. Oh, thanks, Shakes. Mantix, you really should connect to comic artist pro secrets on YouTube. He has 60,000 subs and got kicked out of comics for being a Republican. Months later, he's crowdfunded 200 grand for his own comic. He streams daily and plays piano. Oh, that's awesome. See, I'm never going to reach out to these people. So if anybody wants to get me in touch with any of them, just just hook it up. And it's not laziness. It just isn't in my skill set or my te- desires. I'm not good at self-promotion. I'm, uh, I'm not a marketer. I'm not go- I don't enjoy reaching out to other people and trying to get on their streams. I would love to do it, but it just isn't in me. So if anybody ever wants me to do anything with other people, just... Please, you hook it up, and maybe something cool will happen. But, uh, oh, and I love you, but your etymology isn't always correct. All right, Camden. Well, instead of just saying why I'm wrong, why don't you give an example so that everyone learns something? You know what I'm saying? This is so basic. Uh, do people not have parents? Hey, Owen, I really like you. I'm a big fan, but you're wrong. Okay, about what? Everything. Specifically? I mean, too much to even talk about. Oh, Camden Jones. I did already. Well, say it again then, please. I'm reading it right now. I, if, if I'm wrong, I don't want to be wrong. So let me know how I'm wrong, and then I can tell everybody, and uh, we can all be right. I just can't even get into it, man. Like, that's uh, that's what Sam Harris does, too. He go, he's like, if we want to get into the spirituality of man, we can. But I'm like, oh, we can? Then do it. I'm still waiting for you, buddy. I'm not trying to be a dick. All right, your etymology on bless you is from Latin. Oh, the word bless you or why people say bless you? Are you are you one of those people that... that... All right, it's all good. No, people say bless you after sneezing because of the plague. The words bless you uh, may have a different word origin, but the fact that someone sneezes and they say bless you is from the plague. Now, if you would like to uh, contest that, by all means. But if you're talking about the origin of bless you, I never said that. Why people say it, it's from superstition, not religion. Did I ever say it was religion? No, I said it was an origin of why people say a certain thing. Man, I'm trying to work through this one, buddy. So, gypped comes from gypsies, right? If someone says, I just got gypped, they don't mean they were robbed by gypsies, but it comes from gypsies, right? Bless you comes from the plague. When someone sneezed, they go, bless you, because it meant you may die. All right. Bless the word comes from a much older time, from Latin, right? But people wouldn't have said, bless you, for the plague, if the word didn't already exist, Saying it because of sneezing was from the plague, and we no longer think of it because of the plague. It's part of the Christianization of pagan traditions. They did say it during the plague, yes. Okay, so did people say bless you when someone sneezed before the plague? If so, cite your resources or shut the fuck up. (laughs) Your heart stops when you sneeze. That's why I say God bless you. Damn it, it works just fine without the God. I just don't see the problem either. What about Jesus Christ? What about Christ Almighty? What about Jesus? What about Jesus Christo? What if you say it in another language? What if you just go, ah, nah, nah, nah. what if you just say nigger? Is that, is that offensive to God? Do you understand it's the same fucking thing? All right. I'm just waiting for the kid to write back because I'm giving him a chance. And if he responds to me just saying, fuck you, that's an obvious coward move because he knows I was joking. Um, Waiting, waiting, waiting. I'll I'll just wait for uh, 30 more seconds. Did people say bless you before the plague? 
No, they didn't, by the way. And yes, it was superstition. And it was because of the plague. We don't say bless you because we're scared people will die of the plague. The origin... Hang on, did you study etymology? Should I minor in it? I didn't study etymology. I'm just fascinated by, by words. In fact, the, the kid criticizing me probably knows more than me about word origins. I just know more than him about c communication, I guess. What I said wasn't that the word bless comes from the plague. And so when someone wants to tell me that I'm wrong about something, uh, they got to back it up. Okay, James. Wernick's areas doesn't hold curse words where normal words are stored so they are important in people's brains. Is that the same guy? No. Roy Bear. Yes, it's based on superstition, but there wasn't... Ah, oh, it's going fast. But there wasn't any science at the time. None of that's my point, guys. None of it's my point. My point is we say words... We, say, we, have, uh, we just have little ticks. You know, we say, bless you. It's from the plague. We're no longer thinking of the plague. We stub our soul, we, toe. We say, damn it. We're not talking to God. There was a time when someone would say, God damn it. There they was like a, 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 uh, a plead to God to damn something that they didn't like. And I understand that that is taking the Lord's name in vain, but it no longer means that at all. All right. I, I'm, I, I'm just going to go back to the Super Chats if we're cool. Don't take... Go shut your fucking mouth. Uh, too personally, it was just funny. Yeah, like the word gay. Or the word faggot, my bundle of sticks. All that stuff. We get it all. I get it. Get it, get it, get it. All right, here we go. Speaking of jizz, I sent you a funny video about Justin Trudeau's eyebrow debacle. I would really like your feedback. I'll, <laughs> I'll check it out, but I'm nervous. Oh, wow, that's a big super chat. Hey, man, I've been listening to you for some time now, so the donation is overdue. Thanks, Opie. This is uh, very generous, my friend. Turned 24 the other day and realized that I don't know shit. Listening to you and guys smarter than me helps engage the brain. Also join the Unbearables app as Opie Barris and Alice Official. Love you, buddy. Welcome. And yeah, I get a lot of messages of people being like, dude, I like that I don't agree with you on stuff because you're like grinding at my um, thoughts and it's fun. And those are the people I like. High IQ people. <clears throat> because it, every thought isn't, isn't, a, um, isn't a threat. It's just like, it's just like, let's work it out. All right, Andrew, if everything's determined by everything, but why is Harris upset about Trump? Isn't that biology and physics at work? Yes, Harris doesn't exist if what he says is true. Harris isn't upset at Trump. It's a, a carbon-based domino reaction cycle that no one's in control of, including him. And so he's programmed to say uh, he hates Trump. It's complete nonsense. Dennis Prager says that like this. The worst sin is committing evil in God's name. He is uh, talking about taking the Lord's name in vain. Exactly. The Lord's name in vain, you can see now with statism, except that their Lord is different. Lord, but it's still the Lord. The Lord is fighting racism, sexism. So they're saying they're doing human good, and what they're doing is theft. They're destroying the very people they claim to be helping. And so they're taking their Lord's name, their secular Lord's name in vain, because it's only to benefit themselves. And that is true, pure evil. Ask Lord to take time out to damn something for me. Funny. I'm not an atheist. I'm not agnostic. And I'm not religious. I just am. Unbearable. I love you, buddy. Sage. Yeah, I'm not like this big religion guy. I just am religious because I'm Christian. That doesn't mean I'm like, you must go into the church and kneel, boy. But I do think traditions are important. And I think that anytime you have Two, even three people who believe something similar and they can kind of vibe together, you're now starting to go down that path. And it's, it, it, you can't really, I don't know. Only a militant academic atheist could believe without evidence that all of humanity would be better off without belief. In fact, there's no evidence to that. The evidence is the opposite, that without belief, people fall apart and kill each other and themselves. Ask Anthony Bourdain what's it, what's it like being an atheist. Even rich, rich accomplished atheist. How's his life going? Oh, wait, he strangled himself to death because he hated existence. <clears throat> so what you're saying is, insert straw man here. I know, it's hilarious. Yeah, and there's cultural Christians and, and religious Christians. I really do believe in God. 
But I also believe that the belief in God is inherently good in itself. And that's just my opinion. All right, Crusader Bear. Jordan Peterson said something really interesting on the AMP podcast. That Heath Ledger's Joker was a great embodiment of the Satan archetype, and that's why the part destroyed him. Your thoughts? 100%. Because that was pure evil. It was evil for the sake of evil. And when you're an actor, for that, that movie, it took eight months. He's, he's, he's living that. He's living that. And, uh, and your body sometimes doesn't know the difference between uh, fake and not fake. That's why, that's why people want uh, public condemnations, where they say, I, I, hang on, the Joker was, a, was the good guy. No, he wasn't. Joker was not the good guy. Joker was pure evil. Joker was the destruction of civilization. Well, it depends what your concept of evil is. You know, he's my evil. He's the evil that threatens my family. He's the evil that just, that just wants to be like, what happens if I blow up a hospital? <laughs> it's experimentation for the sake of it. It's poking at humans just to watch them squirm and squeal. Is he right about a lot of stuff? Yeah, that's the most dangerous devil. The most dangerous devil is right about what he's saying. He's revealing the evil in man. He's going, we can lose 2,000 soldiers and no one cares. But one little mayor and everyone goes insane. He's pulling out the evil in man. And that's why you'll watch that and he's an intriguing character. And you almost like love the character. You're almost like, wow, what a great character. Because he's right. But he's also wrong. He's right in that man is full of evil. But he's wrong in that... It, it, he's not He's not wrong. It's wrong to think that's so any way to live because you'll lose everything. He's just poking and squealing, you know? And that's he's not doing it to reveal... Like when he said that, he wasn't trying to show people that our soldiers are valuable. He's trying to show us that no one's valuable. You see the difference? Like the difference would be, this is good-hearted Joker. He'd go, we kill 2,000 soldiers and no one bats an eye, but one little mayor. And everyone goes crazy. So we should save the soldiers. You see the difference? In his world, he's like, let's kill the mayor to show everyone, that, to show that life doesn't mean anything. But the good, the point he made was accurate. Now, the next part is where things get dicey. He didn't want to kill the Batman though. Right, Satan can't exist without God. Without God, there is no existence. Without existence, you can't fuck with it. You understand? Without... And, and, and without the devil, well, you know, this is going to get major pushback. But if you think about the, the yin-yang aspect of God and Satan, uh, Satan needs God. God needs Satan. I know God needs Satan is a really weird thing to say. because it, But God needs the ability to make horrifying mistakes or else existence is meaningless. It would just be... Uh, there, there's no free will. There would be no anything. The one thing God doesn't have is resistance. Just pure everything. So without um, resistance, it's like electricity. Without resistance, there is no force. Or what's something else? Like a, a dam. Without resistance, there's no force. It's just the dam is what causes the energy, right? So uh, so God requires Satan to, to, to have, hang on, God uses Satan to execute his will. I don't know what that means. For, for everything, there's an equal and opposite. Well, there has to be something to fight against or else existence is meaningless. Ohm's Law. Thank you, Slap Weasel. Satan makes being worthwhile. Otherwise, we're just drones. Well, I wouldn't say worthwhile. It makes it exist. It gives it shape because resistance is what gives shape. What gives anything, whether it's power or physical shape. Without resistance, everything just becomes blocked. Like just it, it all mixes and becomes uh, nothing. That's why I do not have sex with anyone from another race. Just kidding. Friction is the best part of sex. Exactly, Iron Bear. If a man and a woman were just the same thing, you don't desire each other. Like if... It, and that's why I think this trans movement is so satanic. It's like they're trying to make it so men and women don't have a difference, that there's no sex, there's no attraction, there's no difference. It's just, we are all the same. Uh, like, the, like the masculine man who will, who will fuck up an animal, bring it home, you know, provide shelter, 
be tender with his wife, but also fuck his wife, you know, do whatever it takes. And the woman that like produces life and milk and, and prosperity with the community and stuff like that, that difference is like, boom. And that's why like, I'm very masculine and my wife is very feminine. We do have traits of the other, of the other, like she's, she's better with like, uh, certain aspects of like, uh, fixing things around the house. I'm not kidding. Cause she has an engineering mind and I'm more like artsy and more prone to emotion sometimes. But in reality, my wife is very feminine and I'm very masculine. And, and that's why it works so well that like when you have these, dr- these people that don't have a gender, they're genderless. That's why there's like infinite genders. Be- it, it, there's nothing there. There's no like, Rrr. you know, like really feminine women love a guy that like smells like fucking cut down pine and sweat. And they love that shit, especially when they're ovulating. Uh, and, and men love women that are like a little soft, has a nice curve on her hip, you know, loves cooking, loves cleaning, loves you, loves her babies, loves, uh, you know, the plan for your family. They like love it. Love. You know, all right, let's answer a couple more. I'm about to play you the, the awesome video that uh, uh, Brazilian Bear sent me. OB, I think I found the woman of my dreams. We went out once, but now I'm leaving for three weeks. She seems really into me, so I think I may. I think my absence will suck for both of us. I appreciate you and Amy for giving me hope. Turin Bear, the absence is fine. You're fine. Just stay in touch. I mean, now that we have phones and shit, do people used to meet and go to war and, and not even know if the fucking... Hang on. The devil doesn't come to you wearing horns. He comes to you as everything you ever dreamed of. Anything expedient and makes you feel great for the moment beware yeah <clears throat> yeah the devil comes um with excitement with with making you feel great but there's just such a deep like cold emptiness to the, to the devil it's so interesting all right here is uh okay so for those of you that are either listening it won't make a ton of sense with listening but youtube I give moderators a wrench because sometimes we would get trolls, crazy trolls. Right now there's a thousand people watching right now and some would be AI bots where it would just be like, you suck, kill yourself, human garbage. And they're just programmed just to cause people to freak out. And others were people that hate me that just want to mess with me. And others were just people that enjoy trolling like, like the Joker. They just want to ruin something fun. Like if I was playing a really fun piano song, they would just come in and be like, Your wife's getting fucked by, you know, just anything to distract me, right? So I gave a wrench to some of my trusted bears with the uh, understanding that they wouldn't censor dissent. People can disagree with me and be like, you're, you're, you're sound, you know, I don't want to silence people. I want, I just wanted trolls out because this is our thing. It's kind of like, um, the, the heckler's veto is not good where at a debate, if people just stand up and just start screaming, that isn't free speech. That's the heckler's veto. That's eliminating someone else's speech, which is what trolls do. So uh, I gave some people wrenches. And then it started becoming this like weird thing where they'd be like, oh, can I have a wrench? And someone, be like, someone with a wrench would be like, can we give blah, blah, blah a wrench? And it got to the point where I just thought it was, I just had a wrench. Uh, I just started murdering people. So now that you kind of understand what that is, um... Uh, Enjoy this by the great Brazilian bear. Where is it? It's called the wrenching. Dude, this is so funny. Like seriously, just give me one second. I gotta like make sure I got the right video. And she did this just last night. Hang on, where the hell is it? The wrenching. Why do we keep modding everyone? Is there really this need for like tons of mods? We just have like everyone's now a fucking mod. Do we really need that many mods? Is there a whole thing where everyone's a mod now? I'll take all your wrenches. I'll take everybody's wrench goes. Hi. Bear Jew first, he'll spiral. I'm calling you now. Hey Bear Jew. You just lost your wrench, bro, for no reason. Hope that scares the shit out of you guys. There was no reason I just did that to the bear Jew. And he's never going to get it back. 
That's for life. Who's up next? Who's up next? Dom? Hey, Dom. You just lost your fucking wrench. Yeah, keep trying to cross me. Tre keep trying to fucking ask me for wrenches when I'm talking about being sad. This corner hurts so much. Who's next? Oh, yeah. This is the final solution. Next up. Off with his wrench. Uh, my best friend of all the mods? The guy that I talk so highly about? Eric Nimmer? Oh, guess what? Everybody's at risk. Nimmer's gone. Gone. Lost his fucking wrench. That's right. You had wrench privilege. Don't push me. I'm sad now. <laughs> well, it's not about you. You're going to be racist. Wait a minute. Why does Nimmer still have his wrench? Yeah. How did Nimmer keep his wrench? I just took it away. Affirmative action, bitch. How does Nimmer still have his wrench? I'm trying this again. What tricky fucking thing is he doing? Dude, I'll put you in timeout. Imagine if I just put Nimmer in timeout. How does he still have it? Dude, black people can't have their wrenches taken away. And now I can't even try to take it away. He's hiding, he is hiding. He is hiding. Because he knows I'll put his ass in timeout. I'll put him on probation. What's the difference between uh, gynecologists and proctologists this much? Guys and bear, that's not funny enough. Oh shit. So you get your wrench taken. <laughs> this is so fucking funny. I just took out of bear's wrench. Who, who's up now? All right. My bad jokes finally came back to haunt me. Give Cod his wrench back, not Dom. Yeah, Cod gets his wrench back. Here you go, Cod. It's not about ethics at all. It's about my will and my force. I'm showing you what, what that really looks like. Now you get your wrench back. You see? You see how that feels like? You have no idea why I do this. And that's the problem, because there's no rules. And now you don't even know how to improve or how to not, or what could happen. I'll fucking, I'll hit any of you guys. I'll take your wrench. I'm gonna give a wrench randomly. Randomly. Who gets a wrench? Who gets a wrench? I'm just gonna fucking give a wrench to a random person. Who should get a wrench? Impress me. The Brazilian guy. Brazilian bear. Hell yeah. I did hit a, uh, I did hit a, uh, a quota. And she's brown and a woman. I want a hammer instead. All right, guys. I'm out of here. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah, and so the girl I gave the, the wrench to just made that video. See? Maybe it does work. Just pure chaos. No one knows who gets... Gets chopped down. Well, I just thought it, it. I just thought the wrench thing was starting to become ridiculous. So I just wanted to just spiral the bear Jew. The bear Jew started texting me yesterday. Uh, oh man, where is he? Where's that little that little Jew? He wrote, "I'm spiraling now." I wrote, "You should be." Wake up call. Those wrenches were all mine, and now you'll never forget it. He wrote, "I don't like wrenches." Too basic. Ratchets and sockets are better. Drills too. I didn't respond to that. Just trying to like butter me up. Although I did like the power I had. No response. I wouldn't mind having it back. If you don't want to give it back, that's fine. I'll come take it back July 1st when I come up to Saranac Lake. Now you never get it. Ever again. Now the Brazilian bear just hit such a home run. I'm going to read some of the, uh, the PayPal messages because, uh, yeah, some uh, uh, paypal.me slash feed the bear. I think it's really uh, a fun thing that I do this because I think that a lot of people enjoy different points of view. And I think that the amount of, of 
uh, types of people and thoughts and stuff that write to me. I enjoy this a lot. I, that's why people are like, why don't you have on your famous friends and stream them? I'm like, what? So they can just be like, it was so fun working with fucking dumb fuck McGee. This to me, you guys are my guests. And I love that you can write me these things and I can just read them and we can all talk about them. So it's good times. All right. Michael Hager. Song request. Can you learn Rex feeling good again? I think it would sound good on the piano. R.E.K.? Yeah. I'll look into that. Thank you. Man, there's a lot of them today. Nicholas. Owen, I don't mean for this to seem like 2 plus 2 equals candy, but I really appreciate your open profile comments today. I know you're taking a lot of heat for being honest publicly, so I hope this helps offset the haters. Yeah, don't apologize for giving me some some honey. I got to make a living somehow, my man. I'm just saying the goal the goal isn't the honey. But thank you, that was very generous. Joseph, hey, baby, the reason why your brain has a hard time buying Malin, who's not aggression principle, is because you're religious. God-given rights because they're a god. God means there's a devil, which means there's good and evil. And evil will never buy into a non-aggression principle. But there is evil, though. You, you See, this. before I finish, I, just, just know that the lack of belief of evil does not make it not go away. And I'll show you things that are truly evil, and you can't explain it to me with any principles, any, like, uh, you know, base senses and epigenealogy. No. I'll show you somebody who, uh, you know, cut a child's head off and had sex with the body. And you tell me about principles. I'll show you just pure, unadulterated evil. So, continuing. And evil will never bind in the non-aggression principle due to the flawed and sinful... Oh, maybe you agree with me. Sorry I, for jumping the gun here. Evil will never buy into a non-aggression principle due to the flawed and sinful... Yeah, we agree. Hang on. I think I, I jumped the gun. Sinful nature of man. We have to be able to defend ourselves. We also have to use physical discipline to drive out flawed and sinful nature from children who are born in the sinful world. All the best. God bless. Ghost Bear. Yeah, I think Molyneux's so good-hearted sometimes that he doesn't... No, he know. He know. I'm not going to say what he knows or doesn't. I'm trying to break habits of assuming in things in people, but... I, I, there's just like pure evil doesn't follow any of these concepts. The, I, I think the non-aggression principle is awesome in my family, in my heart, how I want to live my life, how I, I wish the world was, um, because it's the most prosperous. It's the most logical. It's the most good. It raises the healthiest children, all that stuff. But what do you do when confronted with pure evil? And I, that's aggression. Aggression will be met with blah, blah, blah. I get all that. But what if that evil wins that day? And then they set up their own system. And, and not only is that possible, it's probable. And I know one of the things about the... And by the way, it, it sucks that I'm arguing against a Malinu point right now because I think he's 99% fucking the greatest. And like, I'm so glad he exists. So don't take this as me... Just uh, uh, trying to cause a wedge, but I'm just giving some pushback. And, and pushback is not ideal alone. Like for me to say what someone believes and not allow them to talk. Like there's a decent chance that Malinu is smarter than me. So I don't want to say like, and he thinks this. But, you know, like idea ping pong in your head isn't the best way to do ideas. It's way better to have someone else actually say it or else you go down some weird rabbit holes. I'm just saying that, like slavery, for example, like one of the examples of anarcho-capitalism is when you get rid of slavery, you see what comes from it, and it's good. You know, you, you, we couldn't have imagined back in the day that that we would that we would have what we have now by just getting rid of slavery, and that you can find a way, and that every limitation is a limitation on progress, actual progress, not progressive. You know, like even the minimum wage, the people that hurt the most were the low-income. Um, Factory workers and construction workers, many of which were black. Illegal immigration, who's it hurt the worst? Black, like uh, low paid black people in America. You know, like all these government ideas hurt way more than they help. And they're sold, like taking the Lord's name in vain. They're sold with some higher ideal that's bullshit, right? But what about, I think that's one reason why Malinu got so obsessed with IQ. Because if you have someone with an IQ of 70, they will not comply to this. 
They'll just beat your fucking head in with a rock and take your shit if they if they weren't raised with a ton of love in their in their life. I don't know. There's so much to think about. I don't want to debate against someone who's done so much thinking uh, alone. I would rather do it with him, but I agree with so much of what he says that I just don't really have much of a need for it. I just know evil exists. And I know he would say the non-aggression principle doesn't say don't protect yourself, but I don't know. I, I fucking don't know. I got to think about it more. I'm, I'm not ready to report on that. I really think you'll like that because because I've had some I've like I've told Malinu stuff that I didn't understand and his answer was awesome. So I don't fucking know what he would say. I really think you'll like this. Don't let the time scare you. Brings in a lot of different ideas. I think you should share it with the bears. I'm not sure how to do it otherwise. Facebook? Well, if you think well, if you think is sucks and fell the sword for the bears. Keep up the good work. I couldn't think of anything witty. Oh, you don't have to be witty with me, bro. I already love you. I'll check that out later. Actually, I can I can maybe copy and paste it right now. It just seems to be. Yes. All right. Dennis. Hey, Owen. It's been a while since I fed the bear and submit my not occult fees. <laughs> I also take your firstborns. You may not have caught the emails I sent you last year around the same time. The crazy lady was trying to run you out of town. I'm an engineer in San Antonio that recommended you move to Texas, specifically zip code 78258, bitch. He didn't say bitch, by the way. Sucks you're not moving to Texas, but I wish you all the good fortune in Washington. Anyway, a couple days ago, you mentioned the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I got super excited because I just recently discovered the Rich Dad series. I have read five of his books in like three weeks, put together an e-commerce business plan and started investing on Robinhood.com, a brokerage account with no trading fees. A lot of this immediate action I have to attribute to your training. By training, I mean repeatedly watching you live. One, uh, think of an idea, or two, immediately put it into action. I know that may sound silly, but think about it. Rarely do we see people receive ideas in real time and then immediately put them into action. Mostly people with ideas say they will do it tomorrow or people doing things today don't see the need for new ideas or change. Just like Tommy Robinson's song is an example. Song idea pops in your head. You write the song with the Bear Community Assistance. It was there live, feels like an event in a way. You record it, you spread it. It eventually funds the source of inspiration and contributes to the legal team. That's amazing. And I saw it, mostly all of it in real time. In fact, back in April, you inspired me to start a blog called DennisTheBear.com. By the way, this is beautiful, man. Thank you for this. This makes this is good. But after my wife's gay friend, <laughs> but after my uh, wife's gay friend mocked the website name and sent his gay friends to visit it, I changed the website name to just my name, Dennis, A V N D A N O dot com. I would highly appreciate a shout out of the website. I've written about stocks and Jordan Peterson so far, but much more to come, and a verification. Uh, for verification, please verify. Dude, why not fucking Dennis the Bear, dude? Fuck your friends, your 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 wife's gay friends. They're only mocking it because they can't fuck you. They hate your wife for it. For verification, please verify the least gay of the following names. Dennis the Bear, Engineering Bear. Also, my wife swears she is not a bear, but I find it hilarious if she were verified as Translucent Bear, given that she is incredibly pale and can't tan. Yeah. Welcome Translucent Bear, you're now a bear, your wife, and your bear will be uh, Translucent Bear's bitchy friends can shut their fucking mouths, bear. No, just kidding. You're Dennis the Bear. You're Dennis the Bear. Thanks for all you do, Owen. I'm only 27, but I have two daughters, and it's a source of pure inspiration to see you, a fellow father, doing everything you can to make a better world for your children through speaking truth, through all the hate thrown your way. If you're ever in San Antonio and you want to hang, here's my number. Dude, you're making me pissed I'm not living in San Antonio. Uh, you sound like an incredible dude. You sound like a guy I could be friends with. Uh, good luck to, to you, my friend. And everyone check out his website and support a bear that's really... I mean, man, you, you picked up on exactly what I think is the most valuable thing about the bear streams. It, it's allowing people to see the progress of creation. Like an idea comes, you work it out. Some, by the way, thank you for the compliment, but occasionally I haven't finished certain things. Like like Unbearable News Network, I haven't done enough, like the video portion to the extent that I wanted to by now. But um, I'm still working on that. And I haven't started a comedy network yet. 
but I do have a strong follow through and I want people to be able to see that it's not as, as, um, as crazy as people think where you can just come up with an idea and then just start implementing it. And if it starts working great, if not, you always have more ideas, but just the action action is what, uh, gets rid of depression too. One of the reasons I am so adamant about uh, some of my suicide thoughts about, you know, condemning suicide and suicide as a cowardly act is because I've, I've been very depressed and I know that it's something people can get out of. And if they uh, take their life before they can get out of it, they're just ruining the lives around. It, it, it's, it's a punishment for those who loved you. And, and, and what is more cruel than that? It's a punishment for those who loved you. Like the people that loved you, that took the risk of loving you, are punished for that. And you could get out of the depression. Everything you think could happen. I know people that have that have become wheelchair bound, cancer, lost their wives, lost their children. Depression that I can't fathom. And I've had depression, but not that. Not like not like the type where you just don't see any reason to live at all. And they've gotten through it and they've, they're good. And, and so that's why I know that there's no point where you can't return. And there's places where people are where they're like, you don't know, man. I'm like, no, you don't know. You don't know. It's like Guck lost another friend to heroin yesterday. It's like the amount of death, pointless, nihilist, atheistic death that's happening in America right now. I'm sure other parts of the world is mind blowing. Like, and it's people that could thrive. It's people like, cause I've seen it with Guck. When I first met Guck, Guck was a mess. You know, my brother got him into tree hab, <laughs> you know, cut this tree, pull this tree, do this knot. And then my brother will ask you random questions all day while you do work. Like, uh, would you rather be a baseball bat or a tennis racket? And and that will pull people out of nihilism faster than any rehab. And um, and my brother saved me too, when it comes to just that. Just pull this, and because money won't save you, it won't. It will not. Money can help you. It won't save you. It won't. It won't get you out of, of the darkness. Anthony Bourdain was rich. He's worshipped. He's handsome respected, and he strangled himself to death. And so when I condense, condemn suicide, it's not to spit on the graves of the dead to disrespect them. It's to spit on the grave of that person and disrespect him so that people know that, that it won't be an easy death for them if they want to take their life. And the more people that join me in the condemnation of suicide, the harder it is for people to kill themselves. Because even in the darkest chambers of, of the hell of depression. The fact that you know people will spit on your grave makes it harder. And just that little bit of resistance could save your fucking life. And so all the people telling me I'm human garbage and that I, I'm just a mess and uh, the fact I said that makes me evil about, I don't give a shit. I know that what I said could save lives. And I know for a fact that if I say you're free now, what a beautiful world. Now you're free. Oh my God. People hear that. They're on the brink and they think that people they respect, people they see in the media, people they see in movies, people they see when they're sad or they're happy that have given them the stories that, 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 that Sam Harris has zero respect for. When they say suicide is a relief, people will believe it. When I say suicide is a cowardly act by a selfish man, people will also believe it. So... Yeah. And I have faced a lot. And and just like what you just said about seeing an idea come to fruition, you've also seen my attempted destruction and then it not working. You've seen me lose a lot. You've seen me I, and I, you've seen me lose incredible amounts of money. You've seen me bashed by people I thought were my friends. You've seen all the reasons why behind all the curtains and then you see me survive, proof of life. You see me thrive. You see me get pregnant. You see Walter grow from being a baby to coming over and saying hi. And you'll get out of it. You know, they can't take it from you. The whole town, in my mind, turned on me and made Amy's life 
a living hell and my brother's life hellish and all these institutions. Now the town wants me to fucking stay. And people, um, because the people wanted me to stay. It was the institutional takeover from these, these crazy Marxists, you know, that how dare you say a word. These people weren't even at the show. This one person who had connections to all these institutions. And then women have this way of making other women feel unsafe where our babysitters wouldn't watch our kids because, you know, it, we, we were being shunned by, the, by this group. And then the church wouldn't take our donation and uh, our kid couldn't go to Little Dippers and, and, uh, and Amy felt unsafe. Of course, I didn't. I was like, I'll fight every fucking person. You think I'm going to leave? You think I'm going to leave my area? I will stay just... To... But here's the thing. I'm a husband and a father first. First. I was talking to somebody from the town two nights ago that was like, man, sucks you're leaving, dude. He's like, you're so good for this town. It's like, I wanted you to just stand your ground. I'm like, bro, you don't, you don't think I wanted that too? I'm like, my wife doesn't feel safe here. She doesn't want to have a bunch of white people tell her half Hispanic ass that she's a racist. She hates them now. My wife doesn't like big groups of women. She likes friends. But like when the, because the big groups of women will start turning and turning and turning. And now that they're all apologizing and stuff, she thinks not only are they shitty, they're weak. My wife is a mother of dragons. She's a mother of bears. My wife, do not apologize to my wife if you were shitty for social approval and then you just want social approval from her. She'll disrespect, she'll respect you even less. If you talk shit about my wife behind her back or on Facebook or try to go with the mob and then a month later you apologize and you want to be her friend again, she'll think you're shit. She'll be like, not only do you have no backbone, you're not even exciting. Like, not only are you, do you have a shitty outlook on life, you have no courage. Like, if you really believe that about me, stand up for it. Tell me I'm a racist. And then if you really figure out I'm not, then you can apologize. But don't apologize for what you said because it wasn't that your mind changed. You knew I wasn't. And you did it to hurt me because other people told you to and you're a goddamn coward. And that's why we're leaving. We're leaving because my wife doesn't fucking want to stay here. And she has every right to think that. She took a chance with me to come out here. You know, she loves my brother, loves that family, loves small town. She can make it work anywhere. Negative 40, I'm on the road. I come home. She's named the deer. She's so lonely. She sticks with it. You know, to get Walter and the family away from SJW nonsense Los Angeles, where the air always has brake dust in it, and everyone identifies as some different shit, and, and people can be sexually assaulted on the street, and the cops don't do anything if, they're, if the uh, predators are in a protected class. Instead of going closer to Washington, where her family is, we took the long way and we went to Saranac Lake. And so when that town did that to her, not even me, to her, that's when I was like, all right, baby, where do you want to live? And I wanted to live in Texas because uh, I just like a lot of people there. I have a lot of friends in Texas and, uh, you know, it's a sweet ass state. But I wanted to give her the opportunity to live in her dream environment. Because she gave that to me. And these people fucked it up. And just like the free market, the punishment is I go somewhere else. I'm valuable as fuck. And I was saying that. It's like, it's an honor to have me in your town. And now I go somewhere else. That's why we didn't need all these laws. Free market ends racism. And bigotry in the workplace. Someone says, I don't serve no black guy. Someone else says, I do. Then you take your business somewhere else. That guy goes out of business. That guy, even if he doesn't go out of business, people go, oh, that's the guy that won't serve my friend, Steve. It's like, oh, we'll just go over here. That's like me. Oh, you want to treat me this way? I'm not going to stay and try and beat, just beat you at the expense of my wife's happiness. No, now we go somewhere else. You had the opportunity, this town, of having... An artist of my caliber, of my expertise, of my family values, of my money, frankly. I, I brought money to this town. I shot my special here. I buy things here. I, I intentionally don't go to Plattsburgh to buy stuff where it's cheaper. I stick here. I, I go to, out to breakfast all the time with my family to support this area. You had that and now you lost it because you didn't stand up for what is true, which was that I am not a racist. That was a joke. 
You have no right to judge jokes. It's an art form based on sarcasm, hyperbole, and irony. You can't judge it. And if you want to not take my money as a church because someone said something said something, it's a shit community that isn't strong. Strength comes from when things go south, people stick together. And I love you guys for having my back and giving me super chats and, and feed the bear PayPals and buy my shit and stuff because it's allowed us to survive. It's allowed me to be able to stay on the path that I would have anyway, but God bless you guys. Because people that believe in something greater than themselves will flourish, but it's at the, but you will feel pain, exile. My brother said, look at your house. You're moving to a beautiful house, man. He's like, man, sometimes I get envious to be honest with you. He's like, you can just do that. You can just buy a house and move to a house. And it, right where you want. And it's, Court, look at that. Look at that land. And I'm like, Jason, I'm in exile in a way. I'm like, I have resources because I have to have resources. At any time, I'm like, my dream was to grow old here with you. Fuck, I'm going to get emotional. God damn it. Um, see, for those of you that think I just took the Lord's name in vain, I'm not asking God to damn my emotions. Um, yeah, my dream was to be here in this town with my brother and have our kids grow up together. That's not going to happen now. And no house or land will solve that. But my, I have another dream that my wife is happy and that, that me and her maintain a fair marriage where when... Cause she'll, she puts up with stuff. She puts in the work. She sees the big picture and I'm not going to be selfish. It would be selfish of me to stay here. She would, she would, if I pushed her, she'd stay here. And I don't want to leave in the sense that I, I'm, I love my brother. I follow my brother around the world. I went to the same college as my brother in the summers. I do tree work with him when I was in high school. Um, sleep on his couch wherever he was living, Atlanta, Rhode Island. When he studied in England, I went to England. I mean, I, I love my brother and, and I really wanted to stay here, but that's the price. That's the price of, of an ethical life. And it's not fucking easy. I'm not operating from my desires. It's not about my satisfaction and desires. I want to stay with my brother. My morality says that's not the right issue. It's not cowardice. It's not because I'm scared of anyone in this town. I get free shit now from a lot of places because they're so happy I finally stood up to these fucking soy boys. And I'll fight anybody that comes at me about this shit. When that cunt in the woods was like, I know who you are. And I was like, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. And you know who I am. What does that say about you, you fucking bitch? And she's just like, oh, oh. It's like, no, you don't tell me. You don't try and scare me and intimidate me. I don't fall for that shit. I'm not a zebra. I'm not looking to blend in. I'm not good in a herd. I'll get trampled. The tallest nail gets hammered down. Why do you think I don't like fucking communism? All right, I got to start wrapping this up. All right, is there any more? All right, what we got here? Speaking of sex with another race, I have a vivid sex dream about roaming millennial and now I feel the same awkwardness watching her vids as one would have with a coworker after an office party hookup. It's from Zamboni Bear. Well, uh, I think you'll be fine. I think you'll be fine with that one. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like now you can't watch your vids. I mean, dude, half the, half the guys watching this right now are just furiously masturbating. That's what the whole bear streams are all about. Everyone's just getting off and they don't seem ashamed at all. They just tell me all day long. I can't stop whacking off to you, big bear. I'm just kidding. For those of you that don't understand sarcasm. Happy Father's Day on. Oh, today's Father's Day. No way. Thank you for your courage to stand up for the traditional family unit. I apparently I not. I'm not as good as I thought I was because I don't even know today was Father's Day. I just thought today was uh, another day in, in Bear, Arizona. Unbearable for life. Hey, Owen, good luck with the baby. Hit me back on bare phone about Vancouver when you can. I got a 420 seat venue. Free Tommy Robinson. That will be after my baby is born, my friend. I'm just taking it all, putting it all on ice. Because of the super chats and the PayPals and stuff, I don't have to push it right now because I, I'm in a hole financially, which I was. 
Uh, it's a way, way, way better move for me to just focus completely on Amy and the baby's needs. Uh, but thank you. We will be in touch about that. Chris Hanna. Spent 10 years in many atheist groups. They all fall apart due to identity politics and infighting as they failingly try to set rules and announce meetings. They moralize more than any church lady too. Yeah, it's, it's a mess. It's everything you hated about the church is that with none of the good. Like that church lady infighting, it's multiply that by a thousand and take away God. Have fun. What are your thoughts on Stephen Lynch Comedian? I saw him once like 50, 10 years ago and I liked him. I just haven't really kept up with him. Pale Face Bear, download special for free, paying now. Met you at Prosser. No, dude, no, it's all good. Have it. I'm doing good. I'm just letting you know that this is how I... Met you at Prosser but had to take off after we took a pic Kids and whatnot. Be careful living on the west side. Soy osmosis. I got on soy shields that, that are pretty... I, I my, my soy shields are so thick that it doesn't even come close. And that area is more, is more conservative than where I live right now. A lot of my friends are, um, are, are non-soy here, but there's so much public shit here in Saranac Lake. Like there's... Um, a lot of public schools, there's a, you know, there's a, a, a prison. I don't know if they're right or left. I don't really know. But there's enough uh, of that New York State big government tit here that, uh, you know, there's Republicans, but there are people like me that, are, that question the state itself. I'm not a zero state guy because I can't, I, I'm not going down that road again. But uh we're, we're just, I don't know. It just isn't one of those, uh, fuck it. I'm just going to continue. Self-promotion feels weird, but I do funny parrot. No, no, it's great. Are you kidding me? That's not self-promotion. You just bought yourself a little ad. <laughs> Think of it that way. But I do funny parodies and act like a moron to make people laugh. If you could promote my YouTube channel, I need bears. Sweet. Well, tell me the damn channel. Babbling Brook. Self-promotion feels weird. <clears throat> Is Babbling Brook your channel? Hopefully. Been a silent bear for a while. Can you verify me as Blueberry Bear? Yes. Welcome, Blueberry Bear. Go to unbearablesapp.com. Raymond, sure put on your Bukaki librarian glasses. Sure put on. I don't know what that means. I don't know if you're the guy that heckled me earlier. I try to finish the ones even if they're mean, but I don't know what uh, Bukaki librarian glasses. You mean people are just going to start whacking off on me? I don't even What the fuck does that mean? Uh, all right. I'm going to get out of here. So, oh, yes, Babbling Brook is my channel. Sweet. Babbling Brook. My, I'm going to be uh, having my mom on again this weekend. And we'll open more packages together. So tomorrow, I don't know, probably I'll figure it out. I'll set, a, I'll set an alarm. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And even uh, setting the alarm, the notification, doesn't always work, guys. There's really a crackdown at YouTube. It's still happening. It's happening to Crowder. It's happening to me. Uh, so follow at Owen comedy on Twitter. I love to love, keep people updated. I will, uh, er, and check back in on my channel. I just check in, see if I said something. Yeah. What does it say? I love Owen, but he sucks at opening stuff on chat. Well, yeah, I do. Bear phone. I'm sorry, man. I'm trying to do the best I can. I did. I did the PayPal's at the super chats. Um, my brain's frying. Your mom can open my package, says Grateful Bear. Someone had to say it. Yeah, someone did have to say it. And now I'm going to kill you. Uh, much love. I'll hit the bell. All right, so we're going to watch uh, Brazilian Bears one more time. Because it's that good. Owen has bit chips. It's a condition. Leave him alone. That's hilarious. See, that's the type of shit talking where it shows affection. Uh, also my Instagram, Owen Ben Jam. I don't know. I like, I, it's not always easy for me to get in touch with you guys, but I really want you to hang out with, uh, with me and my mom hanging out. Cause that's always a blast. So, uh, patreon.com slash WDTL or huge pianist.com slash subscribe. If you want to support the show, uh, get updates and whatnot. What else? What else? I haven't been doing Vimeo lately because Amy's the one who usually sets that up. And uh, also because they took down one of my videos, 
And so I just want that up because that's where I sell my special from. So I'm not, now that YouTube's flowing, uh, I'm not even gonna risk that, that that gets taken down because that's where my specials are. So hit the like button and comment. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 I got it. Comment in the comment section what I should name my son. And here's some options. Frederick, Victor, Oscar, uh, Wolfgang is still on the table. But don't just say Wolfgang because it's a funny one. Like, like really, yeah, I like Victor too, Coder Bear. Victor's a big one. Victor, because it's like victory. Uh, bah, 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 bah. All right, well, just comment what I should name my son. Or if you have other ideas, me and Amy are really starting to dial it in. Yeah, Charlie's a big one too, but apparently Charlie is cocaine in Australia. Uh, and I haven't been able to get that out of my head. It's like, Charlie. Albert's a good one. My, my wife really likes Albert, but... Al. Al isn't as cool. Albert is cool. I just, I, I can't always uh, assume people are going to respect Albert. I like Victor, Frederick. Oscar's cool because I want Big O and Little O could be cool, but Oscar's a little on the fucking brown Hispanic side. Uh, might as well name the kid fucking Jose, you know what I mean? But Oscar's cool. Oscar the Grouch. Little O, Big O. I liked Oliver, but too many kids are named fucking Oliver now. All right, so here is, uh, maybe I should just name him Aziz Weinstein C.K. Clinton. So thanks for hanging out, and here is Brazilian Bear's awesome video again. Much love, everybody. Oh, and share this shit. If you like anything I do, tweet it out, because I, I don't have Twitter, and we got to fucking share this shit. We got to get some intimidating numbers. Let's scare these motherfuckers. Why do we keep modding everyone? Is there really this need for like tons of mods? We just have like everyone's now a fucking mod. Do we really need that many mods? Is there a whole thing where everyone's a mod now? I'll take all your wrenches. I'll take everybody's wrench goes. Hi. Bear Jew first. He'll spiral. I'm calling you now. Hey, Bear Jew. You just lost your wrench, bro, for no reason. Hope that scares the shit out of you guys. There was no reason I just did that to the bear Jew. And he's never gonna get it back. That's for life. Who's up next? Who's up next? Dom? Who's next? Oh yeah, this is the final solution. Next up. Off with his wrench. My, my best friend of all the mods, the guy Very that I talk so highly about, Eric Nimmer. Oh, guess what? Everybody's at risk. Nimmer's gone. Gone. Lost his fucking wrench. That's right. You had wrench privilege. Don't push me. I'm sad now. <laughs> well, it's not about you. Like Wait a minute, why does Nimmer still have his wrench? Yeah. How did Nimmer keep his wrench? I just took it away. Affirmative action, bitch. How does Nimmer still have his wrench? I'm trying this again. What tricky fucking thing is he doing? Dude, I'll put you in timeout. Imagine if I just put Nimmer in timeout? How does he still have it? Dude, black people can't have their wrenches taken away. And now I can't even try to take it away. He's hiding. He is hiding. He is hiding. Because he knows I'll put his ass in time out. I'll put him on probation. What's the difference between a gynecologist and a proctologist this much? Gynecologist, bear, that's not funny enough. Oh, shit. So you get your wrench taken. <laughs> This is so fucking funny. I just took the Ike and Bear's ride. Who, who's up now? All right. My bad jokes finally came back to haunt me. Give Cod his wrench back, not Dom. Yeah, Cod gets his wrench back. Here you go, Cod. It's not about ethics at all. It's about my will and my force. I'm showing you what, what that really looks like. Now you get your wrench back. You see? You see how that feels like? You have no idea why I do this. And that's the problem, because there's no rules. 
and now you don't even know how to improve or how to not or what could happen. I'll fucking I'll hit any of you guys. I'll take your wrench. I'm gonna give a wrench randomly. Randomly. Who gets a wrench? Who gets a wrench? I'm just gonna fucking give a wrench to a random person. Who should get a wrench? Impress me. The Brazilian guy. Brazilian bear. Hell yeah. I did hit a, uh, I did hit a, uh, a quota. And she's brown and a woman. I want a hammer instead. All right, guys. I'm out of here.